If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. If you've had a chance to look over the agenda, we have a, uh, a couple proclamations here, so I will relinquish the floor to our mayor, Mayor Hushauer. Test, test. Good evening, everyone. Our first proclamation is for the National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and uh, we have Robin Grove here, and she has a couple of persons with her. Would you please come up? Hello. <laughs> it's good to have you all here. I'm going to start by reading the proclamation, then Robin will have a chance to say a few words, talk about the pinwheel garden and sure. stuff like that. That'd be great. Uh, again, National Child Abuse Prevention Month, April of 2024. Whereas all town of Mount Airy citizens share a responsibility to protect our children during the month of April, we renew our commitment to prevent child abuse and sexual assault and to work to enable our children to receive the protection, resources, and support they need. And whereas childhood is a formative time and abuse can have devastating long-term effects on young lives, in order to provide a safe environment for our young people, parents must work to protect their children from the dangers that threaten them. Family members, educators, public officials, faith-based, and community organizations all play important roles in helping to ensure that children are safe and can grow, surrounded by love and stability. And whereas we underscore our commitment to building a community where all children can thrive, develop character, and learn to be responsible citizens in an environment of security and love. And whereas by honoring our obligation to support and protect our young people, all of us have an opportunity to make a positive difference in the life of a child and build a broader future for our community. Whereas by honoring our obligation to support and protect, I'm sorry, now therefore we, the mayor and town council of the town of Mount Airy do hereby proclaim the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the town of Mount Airy and do commend this observance to all of our citizens and witness thereof I have hereto set my hand and have caused the seal of the town of Mount Airy to be affixed this eighth day of April, 2024. Uh, Robin, would you like to say a few words, please? Thank you. Thank sure. you very much. I do appreciate that. And we have a few tokens for the council and for the mayor. So um, thank you very much for your support um, to the mayor and to the council and for your proclamation um, for the children of our community. My name's Robin Grove. I'm the director of the Child Advocacy Center of Frederick County, better known as the CAC. And if you are not familiar with us, we work together with our partners in Child Protective Services, law enforcement, prosecution at the state's attorney's office, medical professionals, mental health professionals, advocacy professionals, um, in order to provide a collaborative response to allegations of child abuse. Um, at the CAC last year, we were honored to serve 316 children and we conducted more than 300 child forensic interviews. Over 700 hours of trauma-focused therapy was provided. We had over 1,000 advocacy encounters, and we provided more than 200 Handle With Care notices were sent to Frederick County Public Schools on behalf of these children. So it is our honor and our privilege to work with these families, and we thank you for your support as we help them begin their healing journey um, after they have had an experience of child abuse. So. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yes, yes. And there is the pinwheel garden. I don't know if you've seen it, but we have it planted by the Flatiron Building. 
And the pinwheel is the national symbol for child abuse prevention. It is the symbol of a happy and healthy childhood, which is what we strive towards in our future. So that is what the pinwheel garden is for. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mayor. Uh, Thank you. Can you stand in front of the podium here? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right, we're privileged tonight to have some people from our county governments here. I don't think I saw Mike Guerin. If he's here, you he can come on up. But uh, if not, we certainly have Council Member McKay here from the Frederick County side. And then from the County Executive's Office, we have Acela Bravo, and I know your son's up here. Come on up. You can come up too. Come on up. And Josh? He's not my son. Oh, I apologize. This is Devin Pierce. These, Devin these Pierce kids already. change so much. Yes. So anyway, so um, the reason that they're up here tonight is that uh, we have a gentleman in town named Josh Marks who went out and made sure, and he's made sure every year that we recognize our Vietnam veterans in town. And he received proclamations from Frederick County, from the county executive, Carroll County as well. And then we also have a proclamation from uh, Governor Moore as well. And what I'm gonna do is read the uh, Frederick County one because y'all showed up, <laughs> okay? And, uh, and I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, whereas in 2017, former uh, President Donald Trump officially designated March 29th as National Vietnam Veterans Day, and whereas millions of U.S. military men and women bravely answered the nation's call to serve and fought in armed conflict to protect our nation's ideals, and whereas the town of Mount Airy honors service members with a welcome home Vietnam veterans celebration each year, and whereas our country is forever indebted to our veterans for their quiet courage and exemplary service, and therefore we encourage others to thank and honor those, these heroes whose selfless sacrifices continue to inspire us. And now therefore, as the County Executive of Frederick County, Maryland, I hereby proclaim March 29, 2024 as National Vietnam War Veterans Day. And that's been offered by the County Executive, and we have our uh, persons up here to uh, deliver that to us, and we greatly appreciate it. Uh, at this time, I would ask, do we have any Vietnam veterans in the audience? Wayne, stand up. Mr. Beck, stand up. Uh, so we greatly appreciate your service. At this time, if you have comments to make, feel, feel free. Mr. McKay. Thank you for the opportunity to just try to provide some brief comments. I hope they're brief. I'll probably fail at that. Um, you know, the Vietnam War has a very unique place in our history, and I take that rather personally because my Uncle Paul served in that conflict. He flew the Huey. He brought men into combat and then took them out of combat. And, um, you know, we, 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 we have a custom, we have a tradition, we, we strongly believe it right now where we thank our service members for our service, but that's not what happened back in that time period, and we all know why. It was a very challenging time period. And I never got a chance to say that to my uncle. I was young when he passed, uh, but most importantly, he never wanted to talk about that conflict. And I didn't learn why until after his passing, and I wound up, you know, just kind of digging in and talking to his former uh, um, soldiers he served with and learned about the traumas he experienced in one particular fateful day that kind of haunted him for the rest of his life and, and brought back demons with him um, from that conflict. So I never got the opportunity to thank my uncle. But when I have this opportunity to thank other service members, I gladly do it. So thank you so very much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Wayne, if you could come up, Mr. Beck, if you could come up as well. So we'd like to uh, have the council come around. We'll do a quick picture if that's okay. I wasn't in Vietnam. <laughs> Different war for me. All right, we have one more certificate of recon recognition. Mark, could you come up here? I take a lot of pride in being able to say Mignona. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, well, uh, Mark has been an incredible volunteer for the town for over a decade. So it's hard to believe how much you have done for this town. Every time we have a town event, Every time that uh, cleaning needs to be done, your work on the Parks and Recreation Board, I mean, I, I can't say enough about how much you have done for this town. And, and we're, we're incredibly thankful, grateful, and privileged to have had you serving the town so much. But, uh, but you moved to Hagerstown yeah. <laughs> and left us. But I know this, your parents are still around, and we know that you're not gonna be that far away and we still see you at a lot of town events and everything. You but do, and you, can, you will. Okay, you great. So, so the council and I have put together the certificate of recognition from the town of Mount Airy to Mark Mignona, Board of Parks and Recreation 2017 through 2024, in recognition, recognition of your devoted, hardworking, and selfless service as a board member on the Parks and Recreation Board. The time and effort that you have given to this town is greatly appreciated. It is volunteers like you that make Mount Airy what it is today. So thank you, Mark. Thank you. So. <laughs> and as an added token of appreciation, we have this plaque with the town seal on it you that. That, you can, uh, that you can put up in your in your new establishment up there in Hagerstown, so <laughs> Mount Airy's never going to be that far away, and uh, and we greatly appreciate it. And we have a little uh, mayor gift card here for you, thank you of appreciation. Hopefully, there's a Jersey Mike's up there somewhere. There is. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> all right. So all that is for you, and uh, if the family would like to come up here, yes. uh, we'll we'll do a picture, Go on. if y'all don't mind. <laughs> And it's Can you grab Dana's camera so she can go? Can you grab Dana's camera so she can go? There you should hold that. Hey, Larry, you can have him now. No, I can't. Okay. I don't know, Mama. I don't know. I just squish him. We good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, thank you very much, the Mayor. That concludes our presentations portion of the agenda. We are now on to public comment. By a show of hands, how many people here would like to speak? Three minutes, okay for you guys? All right, Mr. Marks, would you like to go first? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, council. Uh, first off and foremost, thank you very much for honoring our veterans. You know how that's a big thing for us, especially our family and veterans. Uh, tonight, I want to talk to you about peddling in our neighborhoods. I had an incident on Friday night where I had a scurrilous guy dressed all, not, I don't believe he was even affiliated with anybody, knock on my door at my front door and try to get me to, to say that I want to buy windows from him. And I have a sticker clearly conspicuous on the window. I did my CCL, CCW training, as I told you, this weekend. And one of the guys that was my trainer is Wayne Tr Creator, who's with Myersville Town Council. And he told me that they police this thing religiously. They control that town. And when they get somebody come and knock on the door and they violate, they write them up and they pursue them and they make money with it. I've been after this for about four or five years. I've asked the council, please, maybe six signs around the town so these guys can't claim that they don't know they're not supposed to be here. I don't think six signs on north, south, uh, east, west on the arteries and one, sound in Main, and one sign in Main Street to say don't do it unless you got a permit is out of the question. It's not a lot of money we, and it's really more for the public health, safety and welfare of the town. And if you think about it, you think about all the elderly citizens being taken advantage of. I had this conversation with the president. He knows. It's something that's it's about time to do. The country's changing. We have a lot of scurrilous people running around, and we should not be dealing with this. We should have the sign out. If we send a patrolman out to go get them, and they have a picture, I'm, I'm brazen. I'll take your picture right to your face. I did that, and the chief got a copy of it, and so did Scott. And I sent it to you, and to Jason, and to Tim. I have no problem with that. But I think it's time that we need to push it a little bit and let it be known that Mount Airy will not put up with it if you don't register and pedal in a town and maybe increase the fine a little bit. I don't know what the fine is currently, but I think $250 is more than ample to fund a lot of our programs here. And I suspect you probably have a nice little windfall. And that's what I have to say, sirs. Thank yes. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Council. Um, I'm going to be on a cruise in May, so I won't be able to speak about the Beck property, but I had a few uh, things I'd like to bring forward. First, I'd like to thank um, the applicant, Pleasance, for reducing the number of houses. I think originally it was 476, and it's down to 350, which I thought was a significant reduction. But let me sort of characterize that. I still think there are some serious problems that have to be addressed before we can go further. As most of you know, I was on the council a long time ago, but I was on for a long time. The first 15 years, I knew water was an important issue but I didn't realize how important until we had the drought in 2005. And I had to do a, dig di a deep dive into water capacity analysis. And I've kept it up for about the last year and a half. The technology for calculating water availability has advanced a fair amount because of some fancy computer programs in the last 10 years. We have complications from the PFAS and water uh, impurities. It makes it very, very challenging to come up with accurate water capacities. All I can say is, from my analysis, 350 is still a problem. If you get down to 250, you're there. But I feel sorry for the applicant and possibly for the property owners because if you knock 100 houses out of the, uh, what you get, 
you know, the yield, something has to give. I'm very sympathetic to that, but I don't think under the circumstances we have any alternative. There are still challenges with Center Street. We don't have uh, direct access from Route 27 to downtown. I live on Park Avenue. I have to say, Park Avenue traffic is pretty good because it's kind of blocked when you get down around the parking lot. There just is no way to get across town. And I think that's a serious problem. I know Councilman DeMotor has done a lot of work on that, and I appreciate that. Um, but I think we still have some serious challenges before we go to the next stage. And like I said, I won't be here in May. But we have to cut down the number of houses and space them out more equitably because right, they're all kind of clenched together. Now when you spread them out, <clears throat> you give up a little bit of your impermeable surfaces and you make it more difficult. But that's all part of the problem and I think we have to work these things out. I think at the end we'll have a pretty decent plan, but we have a fair amount of work to do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pyatt. Mr. would you like to go? Hello, Town Council, Mayor. Um, Nicole Main, 405, Wendy Knoll. I didn't know if we're still doing that. <laughs> Um, first, I just wanted to thank the council and the mayor um, for the workshop that uh, we attended. Um, I thought that the town had excellent questions. Um, I mean, I was, I was really impressed. A uh, few things that I hadn't thought of myself as well. Um, so I know if there is a vote in May, um, so I will save the long spiel for May. But So keep it kind of short, but um, tonight you're discussing whether to continue the workshop. And um, I feel that the plan is still dense, still too dense for our APFO. Um, I feel that you know the, cr the crosswalk situation is kind of a joke. Um, the seniors are on east with ball fields, so there's a lot that we could still discuss. Um, but I think that the plan itself can't be worked in a workshop. It needs to be redone. Um, at this point, if you had another workshop. The citizens are getting fatigued of this. It's been a few years of talking about this property, and I don't. I feel like it's just going to be kind of, what's the phrase, beating a dead horse? Um, if you go and try to have another one to just discuss the same plan, but just tweak it here, tweak it there, that plan needs to be tweaked in a lot of, like, way more than a workshop can give. Um, so I would urge you to vote no for this plan and tell them that Mount Airy deserves better. Mount Airy could get a better plan for our town. Um, I've, I traveled to Eastern Virginia for Easter, and I saw a lot of planned communities out there that were beautiful. They used the landscape. They had tons of open space. They had fields. They had a lot to offer their towns. And I don't know if it was technically MXT. There wasn't a commercial element, but I've seen it. It can be done better. Um, so please, I urge you not to continue the workshop, but to instead tell Pleasance that we need something different. This isn't going to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I don't believe we have any speakers for this evening. There, nothing. All right. We'll move on to our approval of council meeting minutes and closed minutes and other minutes related there too. We will start with the March 2024 council meeting minutes. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. We have a second. I'll second. All right, any discussion on these minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the March 4, 2024 Cowan Council meeting minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. All right, on to March 2024 closed meeting minutes uh, for statutory authority to close session, general provisions regarding land acquisition. I will make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Next up, I will invite the Civil Air Patrol report with Major Roth. Good evening. This is our report for March 2024. 
Under mission and significant activities, the Maryland Wing held its change command ceremony. This is resulting in some organizational changes uh, that affect both our squadron and uh, others in the area. There's no actual impacts to operations or readiness that are anticipated this time. The squadron also spun up to participate in a scheduled search and rescue exercise two weeks ago. However, due to weather, all the air and ground operations were canceled, unfortunately, but we did get a lot of lessons learned as far as our alert and communications process in the spin up for that. Under community support, we executed a quarterly roadside cleanup for the adopted section of, our, uh, of Main Street. And we had uh, one member participate in the Mount Airy Middle School Career Day event, where they represented both Civil Air Patrol and uh, STEM related career fields. Uh, we had one member uh, take and pass the FAA Part 107 exam, which gives them the full commercial drone pilot qualification. Uh, this is the first member of our squadron to achieve this status after uh, quite a bit of training going on, and uh, we hope to carry that on to some other members within the squadron. We had uh, two cadets complete winter encampment, which was held over three weekends, uh, the last three months. Eight cadets completed orientation flights. One new cadet joined in March. And as far as operational status, our ground team does remain fully mission capable, and we continue to have multiple individuals available to support both SUAS and mission-based operations. On the horizon, we have an information table that we'll be putting up at the team drivers event this coming weekend, uh, as well as uh, under the new wing leadership. There's some, some ch changes to our schedule and training, so we're aligning some of our weekend activities to coincide with uh, the new schedules. And uh, we do have another search and rescue exercise scheduled for the first weekend in May. I'm not on here. We also are receiving uh, multiple requests from the community to support some other events coming up in the next few months. And we're, we're trying to make sure we're uh, able to support without spreading ourselves too thin. So more on that to come. Depending on your questions, that's my report for this month. Thank you, Mayor. Do we have any questions? Easy enough. Thank All you right, very much, sir. Uh, next up, we'll invite Matt Hurd for the uh, Mount Area Volunteer Fire Company report. How you doing, Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, Mayor, Town Council. Uh, for the month of March, the Mountaineer Fire Company ran 211 calls, 159 in Carroll, 40 in Frederick, 9 in Howard, and 3 in Montgomery. And let's not forget about our breakfast, uh, the 21st of April. Please come out and join us. Uh, it starts at 730. Thanks again. All right. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Now we invite Chief Genera with the Mount Airy Police Department report. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> For the month of uh, March, uh, trainings and meetings attended by the officers. Uh, all Mount Airy police officers are now certified with a uh, less lethal uh, de-escalation de tool, our Taser 7 that was uh, conducted uh, along with myself and uh, Senior Officer Bridges. I attended a Zoom meeting uh, with the statewide administrative, uh, administrative charging committee uh, in reference to some other ongoing things that the state administration uh, is uh, looking at. It's a newly implemented uh, source uh, and it's in reference to officers that are being uh, held accountable for new things. Uh, Corporal Brooks attend, attended the 2024 Maryland Safety Training uh, for the Patrol Supervisor. Uh, I just received his document from completion from that. I attended, um, I was invited, excuse me, I was invited uh, by Sheriff DeWeese to attend the Carroll County Sheriff's Police Entry Graduation and Award Ceremony. Uh, again, Craig, congratulations to uh, those entry level officers and uh, county uh, deputies and everyone that received those awards. Uh, it was interesting to attend that. I actually haven't attended a graduation ceremony since I graduated in 95 from Baltimore City. So it was interesting to see how uh, things have uh, progressed through the years. Uh, all of our officers are continuing to complete their annual in-service training requirements and we're actually, uh, I'm proud to really announce that in itself is because all of the officers are ahead of schedule. So that's really uh, good on uh, their efforts to stay on, on top of that. For our community outreach, uh, again, the fire department, uh, great from uh, Chief Russo, definitely helping me out. And uh, Ashley uh, Collier from here from uh, the town, putting together our uh, polar plunge. 
uh, it was a great uh, event in itself, even though it seemed so small and a last minute put together. That was uh, the money that we raised for that went to the Maryland Special Olympics, and we raised $1,699.04. So that was great. Thank you again to everyone that participated, and Mayor, again, great uh, putting on your flight suit. So that was uh, interesting. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Uh, but thank you. Again, all those that attended and uh, definitely helped out uh, again to the Maryland Special Olympics. Uh, Corporal Brooks, uh, we uh, did a, another traffic initiative on March 20th that is attached. And there you'll see the, uh, the results from that. March 21st, uh, Senior Officer Betcher, uh, he was invited to the Mount Airy Middle School for career day as a guest speaker. So that went over very well with our young generation. Uh, it was actually requested that one of the officers come to the school and, and talk. So that was a great uh, time for one of our senior guys to go there and talk to our, our young uh, youth in itself because a lot of people these days uh, where we're at, and I know it was just recently brought up, is this is still an honorable job. Not too many people want to do this job anymore. So seeing that there's a younger generation from that middle school that really wanted to meet a police officer and ask some questions. That was a good feeling uh, for all the officers, uh, even though that we were only able to have one attend that. So thank you again for inviting uh, the Mount Airy Police Department to the middle school. Officer Klesak uh, got the visit along with Mr. Mayor. I know you were there. Uh, the American Legion Gold Star Post uh, 191 for an Easter egg hunt. There is a photo attached there with Officer Klesak that he Took some time out during his routine patrol to attend that. Uh, currently for recruitment, uh, I initialized uh, one level uh, written exam was conducted. There are two um, applicants that I conducted also their physical agility exam. I have an uh, initial of uh, four other certified uh, lateral officers that are, uh, have applied to the Mount Airy Police Department and 10 applications for entry level uh, officers also. Currently, uh, someone had asked me something earlier this evening. Um, our application process for lateral and entry level officers is now closed. That has been closed as of April 1st of 2024. K9 Paisley's uh, deployment along with Officer Eberts. Uh, there were three deployments that K9 Officer Eberts and Paisley resulting in three deployments, one was negative and two were positive and a small amount of CDS recovered here in town. Just to let everyone know again, our prescription over-the-counter med medication disposal is still open, uh, if anything, during our business hours nine to, nine to five. If in fact, if somebody does have something that they need to dispose of, there is a number on the front door they can call and an officer will meet them there and they can unlock it and we can let them in the vestibule area and they can dispose of it. Again, just a reminder, no sharps or anything like that, folks. And if you're unsure, just let us know and we'll try to answer those questions or at least uh, direct you, if anything, to send you maybe to one of the health departments to dispose of that. Some of our upcoming events, uh, April 6th, which obviously that was just honored a little while ago as Child Abuse Awareness Month. So it was great to meet uh, Ms. Grove and I got a tour of her facility. April 6th, uh, which just passed, Again, uh, Mr. Evans, and I got to take part uh, myself and Senior Officer Medeiros, the health fair at uh, Cavalry um, Church. Uh, so that was a great outcome. There are a lot of resources there that a lot of people are unaware of. So I did see some of the council members there too, and thank you for participating in that event. Uh, again, a lot of resources that are there that people are unaware of. Uh, I know it was briefly spoke about this April 13th, uh, this Saturday is the second annual teen driver event at the Carnival Grounds. That's going to be from 11 to 3. That's held by State Farm. Myself, uh, Corporal Brooks, um, there'll be some mock uh, car situations that we'll be doing. Uh, K-9 Officer Eberts will also be there, too. Um, there'll be a, a display with K-9 activity along with the Sheriff's Department. And, again, just a reminder uh, that your taxes are due. It's upcoming. Nobody wants to pay their taxes. <laughs> But just putting it out there. And again, just to touch base on, uh, I know Councilman DeMotor, you had mentioned at the last meeting in itself. I mean, this is huge, folks, for frauds and scams. Attached, if anyone wants any of the information, uh, I put there some of your known scams that take place. And again, scams are really 
large in the town of Mount Airy. If you see, again, with the numbers that we have, the numbers have stayed the same. So we're about five a month for reports. If you have documents, I know the town has a shredding event coming up. Nobody wants to be a pack rat and hang on to that material. If you feel comfortable in itself, I mean, hang on to the material, shred it, see if a friend would let you use a shredder or if they have one of the events, shred your material. Once you dispose of your trash outside, your expectation of privacy is no longer. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna pull through your trash and I'm gonna find out everything that I need to know. And I've done it before, folks, getting there with my little tape and crayons and everything else and putting everything together. So it's a good, good investigative tool, but these people, these folks that come through your town are taking your material, they're claiming your identity, and before you know it, you're getting a bill maybe five, 10 years later and finding out that you own a house in Florida or a boat that you have no idea about, and it's happened. So again, if you're not too sure, just give us a call. It's okay, you can call 911. That's what we're here for, to take the reports. If you have any questions, Again, feel free to contact us, and if you'd like, there is material attached to my report on some of the scams. So again, Mr. Motor, thank you for bringing that up. And like I said, I would attach to, um, that information. Uh, we have zero uh, overdoses to report on either side of Carroll and Frederick County. The initiative is attached to it. We did have um, a slight increase of calls from March of last year, 2023, of 486 to 564. Again, just keep in mind that that is a result of self-initiated, not just only generated 911 calls also. Um, again, there's a bunch of other material that's attached with some pictures. I wanted to spend a little more time on the fraud information since it was brought up last time. Um, and again, thank you. Uh, I was away very briefly for uh, a family unfortunate event. So thank you, Mayor and Town Council for supporting my family during that time. Thank you. That's um, my report. Does anyone have any questions? Go ahead, Matt. Uh, just a quickie, if, uh, and you have it in your report, I just want to touch on, uh, touch on it, please. If, if somebody sees an aggressive dog out on any of our trails and there's no owner around and the dog is acting aggressive, uh, they should dial 911, is that correct. correct? Correct, I did attach that information also along with uh, Officer Scott, uh, our codes enforcement officer who's been on top of that. I know there were a lot of posts that were coming out of a dog loose. Uh, so Carroll County, the Humane Society, they were actively out there. As a matter of fact, I went out there and met the officer also. So again, if somebody encounters something, please call 911. We'll have an officer dispatched to the location it's not a bother, folks. Again, that's what we're here for. And if we can't uh, do anything with the animal in itself, um, we'll call the society. They'll come out if the animal isn't contained. Um, so again, feel free to call. Same thing with the animal bite, uh, how brief it is. We need to still make sure that we're reporting that information to the health department also and making sure that the dog or whatever animal it is, that it's quarantined or if it needs to be extracted out of the area. It's a safety thing. It's starting to get nice out. You, you folks here have put a lot of work into all the new parks and stuff like that. People want to come out and enjoy the, the weather and enjoy the parks. Again, so we're here for that service, folks. So just call us. Yeah, I just want to make sure people know they don't have to get bit <laughs> to dial yeah. 911. No. See you, a dog that's loose, that's acting yep. bizarre. If you can, I mean, sure, yes. Everyone has their, their phones and you can videotape it try to hopefully safely get away from the area and just let us know. We'll meet you at a safe location or at least give us a call back. And if you have a photo, one of the officers can give you his email um, and you can forward that information. And again, we can work with um, the Humane Society and make sure that that animal is taken care of. Thank you. Yes, sir. Council Member DeMotor. Yes, uh, a quick question. Well, yes, first, thank you so much for including the, the detailed fraud information in the packet. I really appreciate that. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm weeding out my basement right now and deciding what to shred and what to keep, and I'm being extra careful about uh, anything with my name on it. So thank you for that. I have a, a question, and maybe it's indirectly for the mayor, but how many officers are we currently budgeted for, and how many do we currently have on staff, or you know, how many officers are we down, so to speak? <laughs> 
we're budgeted for 11, we currently have nine. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any further questions? Just one other question, Council President. Uh, related to recruitment, it sounds like we do have three positions available. Where the uh, and it looks like there was a lot of applicants for both entry level and lateral. So, thank you for doing the uh, because I know we were having problems. I believe getting recruits coming in prior to you taking over the police department. So, thank you for everything you've done. To uh, I guess the best I can say is a large pool of applicants for basically three three positions in, yes, the, in the department. So thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. I do have one question. Uh, yes. During public comment, we did have a resident ask about the peddlers or the people that go door to door trying to sell. Clearly, I know we do have a process in which they can obtain a permit and do it legally. Um, kind of like the dog thing where you can call 911. Is that something that a resident uh, or anybody in a community sees, is that something they should call 911 about to stop this from happening? Yes, they can call 911. And again, one of the town officers will respond to that location, make contact with that an individual, and let them know of how they may obtain a solicitor's permit to peddle in the, in the town. Usually in itself is we give them an opportunity, but then again, if somebody 20 minutes later we were to be contacted once we would have advised them, then what the officer will end up citing them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I would make it very clear, do not engage with the individual at your doorstep. No, there's no... Just call 911, and a lot of us have Facebook. Your Facebook page blows up with your neighborhood page as soon as somebody knocks on a door. So you know it's happening. Just call 911, get out in front of it, and uh, that way we can avoid any conflict and, and let the people that get paid to handle these things handle these things. Right. In reference to that also, sir, uh, just to let everyone know, too, we do not have an officer that is on social media 24-7 nor our crime watch. So if we don't have that availability for that to be monitored like that, we do need you folks to call 911 because if not, we're unaware of the situation. Mm -hmm. So the Facebook is getting blown up. You're calling down to town hall, and then they're calling us. We could have just shortcutted everything in itself. And just, just call us, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get somebody out there to handle the problem. OK? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate yes, sir. It. Yes, thank you. All right, we'll now move on to our mayor, council, and staff reports. We'll begin with Mayor Hushauer with the mayor's report. Thank you, uh, Council President. So March ended up being a busy month with a bunch of events that went on, and I was happy to see a whole bunch of council members joined in on different things, so I appreciate that. I'll start with a PFAS update. The first quarter results of the water samples are posted on the town's website. We're still ex executing our long-range remediation plan. Mount Airy has received notification, and this is old information, but for uh, remediation of two of our five pumping stations. Uh, the town staff has applied for additional funding through the MDE and hopes to fully remediate the PFAS issue as quickly as possible. Still gonna take a couple of years, um, regrettably. Uh, in February, the council and the planning commission approved a letter requesting a modification to the county's water and sewer master plan. Uh, we got an update on that today. This modification will be presented to the Curl Commissioners this month with a public hearing that will get set afterwards and an acceptance or rejection uh, date targeted for May 30th. Uh, included on the current water bill is a statement that was required by the Maryland regulations notifying customers of the results of water samples conducted per the EPA's unregulated contaminant monitoring rule. It's basically a notification of everything the MDE was making us notify you about, but now the EPA is jumping in and saying, hey, MDE, make, make people aware of this. So they, it's, it's running around a circle and Heather and I, are, our heads are spinning uh, because they're asking us to do things that, um, uh, that, that aren't fully cycled through them yet. So, um, but, um, uh, Anyway, that's about it. Uh, on, um, I attended the April 6th health fair at Calvary Methodist Church, and, and Council President's going to speak more on this. 
but I wanted to mention that uh, all the nonprofits were there. The two Lions Clubs that the town has, the Kiwanis uh, was there, the Rotary Club was there. Uh, they were all there, but, uh, but I got cornered by the Mount Airy Lions Club. And I promised them that I would explain all the great things that they do for this town, not that the others don't do equally as much, but it's amazing. You know, without the nonprofits in our town, our services would just be uh, uh, so diminished. Um, so this is the shout out for the Mount Airy Lions Club, which has a membership of 18 people. Uh, they're, the things that they do include scholarships, vision screenings for children and adults, loaning medical equipment, yard sales, they do the fishing derby, Easter egg hunt, uh, they assist in the Diamond, Diamond Jubilee with all the other nonprofits, and they manage the marquee signs. So they're the ones that uh, make sure that uh, things get put on the marquee signs. And one thing that I didn't know, which they pointed out to me, was the clock that's right outside a town hall. That was funded through the Lions Club, so they got us our town clock. So we greatly appreciate them, okay? Um, the Hero Banner Program window is open again for 50 banners this year. The current banners will remain up through Memorial Day. And then the retired banners will be returned to their sponsors. And uh, stay tuned for continued updates, but Ashley Collier and Gina Gallucci-White at Town Hall 301-829-1424 will have more information on that. I suspect that Council Member DeMotor, you're going to talk more about the teen driver event? Correct. Okay, so uh, that's on him, but there is one other event to mention, and that's the, the Mount Airy Talking Trash event, which is on April 20th, and it turns out that there's a couple other towns that are talking trash, too. Neil Roop up in New Windsor says he can pull more trash out of his town than we can pull out of our town. <laughs> and then Mona Becker up there in Westminster is saying she's got more trash than we got. And I don't think that's true. I think we got plenty of trash. And on April 20th at 7 a.m., the Rotary Club is heading up the talking trash event. So if you're bored on April 20th, show up down here by the rail yard. There'll be a sign-in sheet. The three categories we agreed to compete in are the number of bags of trash that we pick up the number of volunteers who come out. So if you can come out for an hour, get your name on the sheet. And then the third category is the most interesting piece of trash that we pick up. So if we pick up anything unique, and we have found some really interesting stuff in the past, we'll probably take it since we're, we were the first ones that talk trash, and we'll probably turn it into a little trophy and present it at MML in May to uh, the winning Carroll County municipality. So. That's our talking trash event. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mayor. On to our Recreation and Parks Board, Beautification Commission, and the Flatiron Task Force with Council Secretary Galetti. So I'm going to start with Parks and Rec. They met on the 16th via Zoom, and I was asked by um, Nancy to mention the Let's Talk Trash. So I'm going to add to what the mayor said, because it looks like it's Westminster, Gaithersburg, District Heights, Laurel, and Mount Airy in a fourth annual contest. So it runs from 8 to 10, but they'll welcome help between anytime between 7 and noon. So, and there's going to be games to win local town swag. So go talk some trash on the 20th. Mm -hmm. And then April 20th to 27th is, kick, that kicks off Love Your Park Week. So there's going to be all kinds of stuff, free activities in various parks throughout the week. And it is on Facebook. So I noticed they started promoting it on Facebook already. So there's going to be a pollinator gardening class, a paper airplane contest, rock skipping, walk and talk, and learn about migratory birds that pass through the area, an international city nature challenge. So keep an eye on the town's Facebook page for, page for uh, Love Your Park Week. Or, as the mayor said, you can call Town Hall in 829-1424, extension 135. They're giving out their extensions now. Yep. That came straight from Nancy. And then April 30th, this kind of sounds kind of cool, hosting a presentation about Morse code. So local resident retired Master Sergeant Stephen Moe used Morse code during his 30 plus year career in the military. So if you've ever wondered what Morse code is and how it works, come and you can learn about it. It begins at seven o'clock on April 30th, scheduled to be in town hall, but maybe looking at a bigger venue if they you know, anticipate a bigger crowd. So again, crowd. 
301-829-1424, extension 135, to get information. Then the Parks and Rec meeting, it was a short meeting. I'm just gonna go through some bullet points. Um, they, oh, Maryland Municipal League hosted by Mount Airy Tour of the Parks. That looked like it, I saw that on Facebook. Watkins Park softball field, got new dirt and manpower donated to spruce it up. Uh, Rails to Trails retaining wall is complete. Rails to Trails West chainsaw art continues. Maryland Department of Agriculture will be putting up spotted lantern and fly traps, locations to be determined throughout the parks and Rails to Trails. And they've been reviewing their portion of the master plan for the parks and recs perspective. The next meeting is the third Thursday of the month, which is the 20th, no? Whatever the third Thursday of the month is. Um, Parks and Rec is always via Zoom, so if you're interested, you can contact Town Hall if you want to participate. Otherwise, you can watch it on Facebook Live. Beautification has been busy, weeding, planting, mulching. The next meeting then is the 18th Town Hall, so it must be the 20th Thursday. It's the same week. So they've been removing weeds in the parks, uh, vest point pocket park pruning roses, planted a bald cypress, moving a swamp oak, granite rocks purchase. They're doing all kinds of stuff. So beautification, you can follow them on Facebook too because they're always doing something. New business, they're refurbishing the Wildwood Gazebo Garden and planting trees and shrubs along rails to trails in the park. So stay tuned for that. And then my last one, the Flatiron met on March 21st and there was a good amount of people there. Let me get that the notes because I got the minutes from her. So Flatiron met, they also sent a letter to town council giving, you guys all got this email from the Flatiron task force. I'm not gonna go through that whole email. The public is interested is probably, is it on the town website? Yes. Okay, uh, let me get that, sorry. So in a nutshell, they basically at that meeting, they went through all the options of in detail, the three options for the choices for the flat iron from the consultant and what they thought and whose opinions on things and went through and various ideas and they weighed every option. So they've sent this detailed email to town council. You all have a copy. What was interesting is concept number two of the promenade, 70% of the flat iron task force voted, selected that as the most practical design and they went through various things. They looked at flexibility, the risk, the commercial opportunities, the funding, the potential costs. They're looking at everything. So this is, if you're looking for something to do, this is a great task force to get on because they do a lot and they're doing a lot. So in summary, they want to remind the town council that momentum for this project is strong and much has been achieved so far. They're still fundraising. They still have subcommittees that are meeting and working. As I said, how many years ago, let's give them a chance because I think they're here to stay and they are here to stay. So thank you to the um, Flatiron Task Force. So they would like the town to continue moving forward and it's recognized the project will be costly no matter which concept is pursued, but this type of capital project should be seen as an investment in Mount Airy's future. At a time when many community projects are perceived as threatening the fundamental, fundamental character of small towns across America, this project seeks to keep it and capitalize on it for the economic development and prosperity of historic Mount Airy. So if you're interested, our next meeting is to be determined. And that's all I've got. That concludes my reports. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> next up, we'll have the Planning Commission with Council Member Evans. Thank you, Council President. <clears throat> for the county planners, um, Hannah from Carroll County, just to kind of mimic what the mayor was saying, the water and sewer amendment for Carroll County uh, regarding the mobile home park addendum on Twin Arch will be reviewed in April and up for approval in, at the May meeting. Um, from Frederick County, Justin uh, relayed some information. The Cromwell property in New Market, which will be age-restricted senior housing, was approved, 184 townhomes and 112 multifamily homes amongst the other single-family homes that was already approved. That's on 160 acres. And their April 10th meeting has no development uh, review projects on the agenda at the moment. Uh, for business, resolution 2024-1 for approval of the uh, priority areas map was unanimously approved. 
A recommendation and breakdown of the 13 categories of available water capacities was given unanimously. 2501 Back Acre Circle would not be required to bring back an amended site plan for the pole building used for storage since it is temporary building. 2310 Back Acre Circle was postponed since the owners did not show up. The pre-concept plan for the Beck property, no recommendation was given on requesting the continuance of the joint workshop. There was also no other motions regarding the Beck property. Uh, we reviewed chapter nine for the master plan. Our next, master, our next master plan workshop is April 11th here at Town Hall at 7 p.m., not 7.30. And our next PC meeting is Monday, April 29th at 7.30, again here at Town Hall. And that concludes my March Planning Commission report. All right, thank you, Council Member Evans. Next up, we have the Streets and Roads Commission and EDC with Council Member DeMotor. All right, thank you. Uh, there was no EDC meeting in March. Our next meeting will be held April 24th. Streets and Roads met on March 28th. We continue to address speeding and other traffic safety concerns raised by our citizens. I wanna hit a couple of key highlights here. First, at the meeting, we discussed a data study performed by MAPD on crash data in the downtown zone. And this was something that was initiated in the Main Street Safety Task Force and we got around to discussing it in streets and roads. So this was a study conducted between Hood Street and Prospect Road over October 2017 through April 2023. Council members, just for your reference, I've given you a copy of that report. Um, everything is in there from multiple crash vehicle crashes to moving vehicle sites, wiping of parked vehicles, mirror slaps, rear end crashes, uh, the conclusion by MAPD was there is a significant threat to traffic safety in the downtown area, specifically between Prospect Road and Hood Streets. The study sound 47 crashes reported. There was also a discussion of how many incidents occur that are simply not even reported, and MAPD made the comment that that number of non-reported events is probably significant. So the Streets and Roads members discussed the data uh, one member suggested that we need a systems approach in terms of looking at the issues and the solutions. And to that end, Streets and Roads members voted unanimously requesting that the town do an analysis study of the pinch points on Main Street in the downtown zone, looking at the current road widths through various sections of the zone, looking at the parking spot locations, and especially those coinciding with pinch points with the goal of trying to understand the scope of the problem and potential actions. Uh, secondly, and as a Streets and Roads member, I brought this up along with concerns that were brought to me from citizens. Um, regarding the repaving of Prospect Road associated with the areas affected by the water, lane, water main replacement project. And uh, my concerns along with citizens are I learned that we were only repaving one side of the affected area. And to me, that did not make sense. Um, it seems like given the amount of traffic on that road and citizen concerns and my own concerns as a council member. So I became an advocate for that. I've discussed it with the mayor, town staff. We discussed it within streets and roads and they made a unanimous vote that both lanes of Prospect Road should indeed be paved in the affected area. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later tonight, hopefully with a positive um, outcome. Um, third, we discussed suggestions and recommendations for improving pedestrian safety in the downtown zone, concerning the existing crosswalks, um, repairing or replacing the existing crosswalks, perhaps adding another crosswalk around liquidity ale works, and there was support from streets and roads to ask for um, budget funding to address those crosswalks. We also discussed uh, progress and improvements being made to the streets and roads webpage to keep our citizens more informed on road work and closures and safety initiatives taken. And then lastly, um, but not least, 
Uh, as was mentioned, this weekend on April 13th is the teen driving event. So this will be held at the carnival grounds from 11 to 3 p.m. Um, activities include the interactive drunk goggles drive, which is kind of fun. Uh, did that last year. Uh, there's a parking clinic, insurance 101, MAPD traffic stop simulation. If you've got teenagers, you got to take them to this. It's a great overview on what you should do if you get stopped by the police. And there are things that I wouldn't have thought of that I learned at the last event. So that, that's one of the most valuable sessions. There's a crash demonstration. There'll be food trucks, auto care demonstrations, car buying education, and much more. So I encourage you to come out and experience that event. Uh, the next meeting for streets and roads may be on May 28th. It may be moved to accommodate uh, member participation, but we will keep you posted on that. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the Recycling and Sanitation Commission and Sustainability Commission with Council Member Munder. All right, thank you, Council President. Uh, recycle, recycling and Sanitation, their meeting was held during the month of March due to scheduling conflicts. The next meeting is scheduled for May 15th at 7 p.m. in Town Hall, but there are two upcoming events related to the Recycling and Sanitation Commission. One of them is the bulk trash pickup scheduled for Saturday, Saturday April 27th. It is curbside. So please have the items out prior to 6 a.m. Saturday, uh, April 27th, and please check the town website for uh, specifics on what is accepted, and there are some other criteria, like if you have a gas grill, please, please remove the propane tank before you put it out, and things of that nature. So please check the town web website for more information. The second one might help out the mayor's uh, Let's Talk Trash event here. Unfortunately, it's the same day, but so you can still do both. April 20th, 9 a.m. to noon at Watkins Park, or until the truck is filled, is a community shredding event. Uh, so if, as Councilman DeModa says, he's cleaning out the basement, checking his um, personal information. If he wants to have it shredded, come on down. Uh, we'll be more than happy to take it. and. We can tell the mayor we found it on, on the side of the road. So that can be helpful out with Let's, let's Talk Trash. Uh, the next Sustainability Commission is scheduled for this month, April 17th at 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. Thank you. That's, that concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. Next up will be the Water and Sewer Commission and the Commission on Aging and Livability, or COAL, which is with me. The Water and Sewer Commission meeting was actually canceled for April. Our next meeting will take place on Wednesday, May 1st, 7.30 p.m. here at Town Hall. For our first meeting with the Coal Commission, or the Commission on Aging and Livability, that took place here at Town Hall on March 13th. Uh, Adele Connolly was nominated and confirmed as the chairperson, with Mary Hushauer as the secretary. The commission discussed the goals that they wish to achieve and a way forward to achieve those goals. The commission also designed and adopted their logo, uh, which will be used at different events to signify who they are and what they represent. The logo actually turned out very, very nice, I think. Um, the Cole Commission also participated um, in the uh, April 6th health fair at Calvary United Methodist Church that was a big success. Um, this was Cole's introduction to the town, in my opinion. Um, Cole's table featured many members, including Diane Linton, with information about local phone numbers and services available both locally here in Mount Airy, but also between both Frederick and Carroll counties. Um, the next meeting that we have will take place here at Town Hall on April 10th at 7.30, and I would encourage anyone that would like to to please come and get involved. And that will complete my reports. We will now move on to our town attorney report, Mr. Tom McCarran. Other than providing uh, general advice uh, in drafting uh, or assisting in drafting resolution 2024-2, which is on the agenda tonight, I attended the uh, planning commission meeting uh, mainly to address any legal advice that may have been requested on the resolutions related to water allocation uh, as well as Mount, the Mount Airy Crossing workshop recommendation. That's my report. Thank you very much. We all did receive copies of the 
town administrator report, code enforcement and zoning administrator. Anything to firm up on or follow up? All right, hearing none, we will now move on to new business. First stage of new business, this is a, an approval of contract with Carroll Land Services for $33,600 for the South Main Street roundabout SWM design. Uh, I will relinquish to Barney Quinn for a brief summary, if you're good with that, Barney. Thank you. Um, so as you know, we've been trying to get this design done for the roundabout for a few years now. Um, and um, we decided to uh, bring in Carolina Services because they do a lot of stormwater management for the county and uh, they understand what they're looking for and that kind of thing. So there's been a lot of going back and forth with um, comments and, you know, things getting addressed, things not getting addressed. Uh, so by bringing them in, that would help, um, you know, make sure that what we submit next time is, is actually what they're looking for kind of thing. So um, that's what we're asking for. So here um, they have a proposal. They looked over the design of what we have so far. They looked over every comment that uh, has been submitted and all the return comments from, from the county. Um, they have a good grasp, they feel, um, of what to do. And so they gave us a proposal for $33,600 to uh, help complete the design. Not take over the design, but just help complete it more with calculations and some drawings. Um, and so this, is, this would be just a supplemental services um, that we would add to the con um, to the overall project. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we get into any discussion, uh, obviously we will need a motion in a second to discuss. Do we have any motions on the floor? I'll make a motion to discuss. Thank you. I'll second. All right. Um, Lynn, I know this has been kind of a project for you. Do you want to, do you have any questions, concerns, or anything? Um, I'm going to let you guys go first because I know the mayor had a lot of good questions that I saw that were some of my questions, so I'm going to let him present those. So I will wait and let you guys go because I'm just going to get down there with my shovel and start digging. <laughs> so I'll let you guys go ahead. I have a few as well. Do we? Why don't, why don't we let the council go and if you okay. don't cover something, I'll All right. jump If you in. guys don't mind, I'll lead in then. Okay. Um, okay. So clearly this was decided upon before this current council uh, was elected. Uh, so I have been playing catch up with, with a few of the things. So I do have a few questions. Uh, one being with AMT being the, the general engineer that, that was contracted to complete the roundabout. Um, was this a part of the contract to get through this stage without requiring the need of CLS to be brought on for an additional fee? It is, uh, but there is a limited number of hours. So it's, there, there is a, um, you know, once they exceed those hours, then they're gonna ask for supplemental services. So instead of having uh, supplemental services with AMT, we would prefer to do it with CLSI. Now, do you think in your opinion that those limited hours, were all of those hours productive? I, I know I've, I've talked with a few people that They've kind of gone back and forth about what they think should be done, what the county thinks should be done. Uh, you know, in, in my opinion, it's if we have a contract that we've already approved, it's kind of hard to then say, well, AMT can't get it done, which is what they said they could do. Let's now take taxpayer money and cover cover them a little bit, if that makes sense, and bring somebody else in it. In my opinion, if and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the construction side of things, I'm not fluent with, but if we have a contract with someone for a certain price to get something done, I'm wondering why we're now going back into the budget to then supplement their lack of work, I guess is a better way of putting it. Yeah, no, very fair comment. Um, we are not 100% paid on stormwater management with AMT, and that's something that we will be reviewing with them. Uh, so not saying that we wouldn't take any hours back from them. Uh, so okay. that, that's something that we have to negotiate and, and review with them, but they're not 100% paid on, on the stormwater management portion. Okay, and what do you think a fair amount of money to request back, and then what are our, I mean, kind of what leverage do we have to ensure that that money gets paid back? I don't have those numbers okay. now, but um, that's something that we're gonna be working with them on that. Okay, um, I'll let somebody else go so I don't. I'll have, 
It's comfortable. Okay. Just quite during the discussion, you said we uh, AMT had a limited number of hours that they have guests they put in the contract for stormwater management. Do we know if they've reached that limit already or have they exceeded that? Because you also indicated that they would be coming to us for a supplemental appropriation, I guess, is the best way to describe it. They haven't reached that limit. Uh, well, I don't know where they are for sure. We haven't paid that to yet. that limit. Right. Okay. So again, that's something that we need to discuss with them and, okay. and work, work through. All right. But I think at, at this time, we're really looking, trying to get CLSI in. Let's try to get things moving in the right direction. Yeah, because and, uh, finalize. how far are we, I guess I want to say the expected timeline that where we were suppo supposed to have been by now, we are definitely behind that by a good bit, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm satisfied. Thank you. Council Member DeMoto. Uh, yes, thank you. So I'm looking at your memo, looking at the background, and you say here, AMT and Carroll County have collaborated for the past year to finalize the design through comments and plan changes. They have made a lot of progress, but the plan has not passed the concept stage for stormwater management design. Why has the plan not passed the concept phase? There, there are things that the county is looking for, and AMT has not provided exactly what they're looking for. So they tend to answer some questions, but then it leads to other questions. And so the contractor has not satisfactorily performed the expected services? Again, they're, they're not meshing with exactly what the county's looking for. So again, that's something that uh, we're reviewing with them. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, can I add to that? So, just turn your, turn your mic. Yeah. Um, so I just want to jump on what you said, and it, it has to do with one of the questions I had and the mayor had is, so it appears to me that AMT has fallen short in the scope of what we contracted them to do. And in my extensive conversations with you the last year, since it was supposed to be done last April of 23, that it's been a stormwater management holdup. So does this have to do with the fact that, I'm treading lightly here, Tom, um, is it an issue of not performing within the scope of what we con contracted them to do. So we need someone to come in that really appears, from what I'm reading in your your memo here, has more experience with Carroll County in possibly getting this stormwater management hold up done. Is that correct? Am I reading that right? Yes. And my take it is is they are successful getting stormwater done in other counties, but in Carroll but County. But not Carroll. Not in Carroll County. So let me let me go on with something I saw from a I mean it's a logical question and I saw a resident ask it. So that makes me and you don't have to answer this, but that kind of makes me question if we should use them in future projects for something in Carroll County stormwater management. That's all. It's just a comment. But I'll let someone else go. All right, thank you. Uh, I know Mayor Hushauer has, or I'm sorry, Carl, did you have anything else? I just wanted to put one other, sorry, Mayor. I just wanted to say I had previous uh, conversations with Barney or the town engineer prior to the meeting regarding the cost and if we should be using AMT again and things of that nature. So uh, I, asked, I asked him some of the same questions, but prior to, to the meeting. So thank you. you're welcome. I forgot to call you and get my update. Uh, <laughs> So, so when it comes down to it, Barney, what would be the impact if this were denied tonight? Uh, we would have to keep working with AMT to try to get through uh, the design, try to get concept approval. Once you have concept approval, then you turn around and submit for uh, final design. Okay, and would the additional $33,000 be required at that point? Not necessarily. Not, nothing's been asked from AMT for for any additional services at this okay. time. Okay. All right. And uh, what would be, if this were approved, how would that affect the timeline? What would you expect? I'm not going to hold you to it, but because I, I know we got to go through the county still. But if if things were to flow 
relatively smoothly? How would it go? So let's just say if, if CLSI needed a month, okay, that's a pretty good turnaround for just coming into a project. Um, the county takes about 45 days to review stormwater management um, for every submission. So at best, that would be about two and a half months to get concept approval at best. That's if they get everything correct in the right the first time. Um, and then they would probably need another month to put together. Again, that's thinking at best case. And then another 45 days for the county to review that. Um, so about five months um, would be best case to okay. get fin final approval. All right. Okay. And uh, all right. I think that's mm. that's enough to... Just saying. <laughs> All right, thank you. Do what you're yeah. going to do. I, um, I, I'm a little perplexed, to be honest with you. Again, this did start before we were on the council. Um, but if we have a contract that was written by AMG, I think that's their AMT, I'm sorry, it's too many letters, um, <laughs> CLSI, AMT, if they undercut what they thought they were going to do, and then we took their bid based on that price, then that was the decision that they made for us to then accept a bid. If they can't uphold their end of that contract, throwing more money at that, to me, is not a smart move. I think we need to hold them to the contract that they gave, that the previous council approved. And if they need to bring in CLSI to further this project along, then that should be on their dollar not ours, and when I say ours, I mean every single person that lives in the town of Mount Airy that pays taxes. Um, you know, I'm, I know that Council Secretary Galetti has been wondering when this is gonna get started and, and you know, is very excited about it, but uh, this is not something, in my opinion, that I would want to throw more money at just to rush it. Uh, if we have to go back to square one and take bids again and we're gonna save anything, whether it's 30,000, 60,000, $10, it doesn't matter. We need to make sure that we're not just throwing good money into somebody else that basically couldn't uphold their contract. Um, so I, with that being said, if there's no other further discussion, um, I will make a motion to deny uh, the approval of contract with Carol Land Services in the amount of $33,600 for the South Main Street Roundabout with SWM Designs with the caveat that we go back to AMT and say, look, figure it out. You know, if, if you can work with other counties, you, you can work with Carroll. And if you can't, then we go back and we get more bids and we start over. So that would be my motion. I would second that motion. Do we have any further discussion? Yes, Council President, you called me off guard before you made the motion. I was going to have some more conversation with the town engineer here. I mean, I get what you're saying, Council President, and everything and all that. I would like to see this move forward, but I mean, we're already probably a year behind schedule, close to it. And it sounds like for some reason, AMT is having difficulty working with Carroll County. So I get that also. Uh, but you also say we will be seeking or hopefully seeking some, some form of cost reimbursement from AMT. Potentially we have not paid them any uh, at this point related to stormwater management. So we could potentially even, is there a way to potentially, I want to say grievance with AMT this portion of their bid and withhold money from them for this section of the bid? Because they seem to have been not delaying, but a year behind schedule for stormwater management particularly in an area where they have, as you indicated, they have been able to work with other counties in it. And if we need to get another contractor that has a proven track record on board to get it moving again, albeit five, five more months, I'm not confident enough that AMT would be able to get the project back on track or back on schedule within five months minimum if they haven't been able to do it now for a year. So I get what the council president's saying, but it's also, I believe this is funded by ARPA money at the end of the day. 
Not totally. But most of it, I mean, there's a good chunk of it is. And if it's another five, 10 months, when is the de deadline for us to submit applications for ARPA fund, for reimbursement from ARPA? So we, we have to be, you want to answer it? <laughs> Sorry, Katie, didn't mean to put you on the spot. We don't have to seek reimbursement. But I mean. Um, but it has to be fully spent by 2026. Like December fiscal or calendar? Calendar. It has to be fully spent by December 31st of 2026. So two years. And it has to be fully committed by the end of this year. Yes. So we're running up against, if we delay any more, we're running up against of, even if we don't like it, resubmit the bid out, out there, we're kind of potentially losing any federal money for ARPA. And then, we, and as you say, it's the end of this this year. We don't know until October-ish at the first part with Carol Land Services, and then we lose one point some million dollars of ARPA that we might not be able to reallocate to something else because it's probably a problem trying to get approval for another project under ARPA money. Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't say we'll lose it because we have already um, entered into an agreement with the contractor. Okay. Uh, in anticipation that we have this completed. But the problem is it has to be committed in the federal's eyes by the end of this year. Right. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yeah. I, so can you just clarify with AMT, if they haven't fulfilled the scope of what we needed them to do, you made a comment, a small comment, so I want to clarify that if they're not fulfilling the scope of our contract, which is clear, they can't, it appears to me, they can't seem to submit the stormwater management plans and get them approved because it's been going back around and about for about a year now, eight, nine months to a year. So you said something about going back to them. Is it possible we can say, okay, well, you haven't fulfilled it, and, and that might be a question for Tom, then we're not going to pay anymore. And we can use that money for someone that can get it done. Yeah, I think there is some leeway um, because we're, again, we're not 100% paid on stormwater management that we can try to reduce some of that contract amount and put it towards the CLSI. Um, I would rather contract directly with CLSI, I'll be honest with you, rather than have it through AMT. Um, it just gives us, you know, the direct contact with them rather than, you know, going through somebody else. So that if we contracted with them, then you you really have more control of what they're doing and how you're laying it out as far as what they need to do and when it needs to be done by. Right. Do we have the ability to contract with them directly and then pull the 33600 mm -hmm. back from what we were going to pay AMT and have that known up front. Basically, we're calling AMT tomorrow and saying we're not going to pay you 33600 because we're bringing on CLSI to do your job. Right, right. I mean, if you wanted to make a motion to allow us to contract with CLSI contingent that we reduce the contract amount with AMT, uh, you know, we could do something like that and then see where that goes. Then that will be... I will amend my own motion to approve the $33,600 for CLSI with the amendment that the exact amount of $33,600 will be removed from the contract for AMT. I will second that motion. Any further discussion? Any, any concerns, Tom? Hold on, for, hold on for one second before we... Well, I mean, <laughs> I'll just simply say generally, obviously, there are any number of remedies that you all would have for a contractor who's not performed in accordance with uh, their scope and in the timeline, if it's their fault, uh, to, to have delivered their deliverables, okay? Um, just because you contract for substitute performance, which is what this seems to be, does not mean that you necessarily waive your right as against the contractor whose performance you are substituting with a new contractor. However, the one thing I would say is we need to consult the terms of that agreement and do the things that we're supposed to do. There are probably notifica often notification provisions about 
uh, non-performance and rights to cure and things of that sort. So uh, if I'm being general, it's because I, I don't prefer to give specific legal advice to my client when the opponent may be listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so th those would be the things I would say. I, you know, I haven't seen the contract. I don't know offhand what the provisions say. Um, you know, I don't have any problem with the motion per se, but, you know, we need to be following the terms of our contract uh, in terms of the means by which we do to do that, if that makes sense. Councilmember Demeter. Yeah, uh, just a last follow-up question. So I'll ask the question. So <clears throat> in terms of project management, have we been monitoring this contractor? And when did we first get alerted that we were they were not making performance benchmarks? Have, have you been doing due diligence and monitoring the contract? Yeah, for about 18 months we have. Okay, so you have a good record of performance or non-performance? Yeah, the, the, they were supposed to have design completed by January of last year. Okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion? All right, right now we have a motion on the table that has been seconded to approve the contract with Carol Lynn Services for $33,600 with the stipulation that that exact amount would be removed from AMT's contract. Therefore, we're not double paying for the, uh, the stormwater management to be completed. Uh, we have had discussion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Barney. Thank you. All right, next up, we have an approval of bond release for S-20-0001 Twin Arch Business Park, Section 3, Lot 32, the Mount Airy Collision Center. Uh, Barney, brief update. Uh, yeah, um, we did our one-year walkthrough, and um, uh, everything's good to go. So we we recommend release of the rest of the funding. Okay. I will make a motion to release the rest of the funding um, for Twin Arch Business Park, Section 3, Lot 32, the Mount Airy Collision Center. Do we have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the bond release for the Twin Arch Business Park, Section 3, Lot 32, the Mount Airy Collision Center. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you, Barney. All right, next up, um, more of just information. We have scheduled a budget workshop for Monday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. here at Town Hall with Tuesday, April 23rd at 6 p.m. blocked if additional time is needed. Are all council members, mayor, and everybody still good with those dates? Should be, yeah. We don't need a motion for any of that, do we? Okay. So right now, just for the public's awareness, we do have a budget workshop scheduled for Tuesday, April 23rd. I'm sorry, Monday, April 22nd at 6 p.m., with Tuesday as a follow-up date if needed. Uh, we also will need to make a motion to reschedule the July Town Council meeting from Monday, July 1st to Tuesday, July 2nd. This is because Main Street will be blocked off for the parade. I believe it's the July 4th parade. So July, yeah, July 3rd parade. So uh, either way, Main Street's blocked off on the 1st. So in order to let people arrive and, and us to be able to get in and out, we are going to move it to Tuesday, July 2nd. Uh, I will make a motion to reschedule the town council meeting to Monday, July 1st. Do we, oh, I'm sorry, to Tuesday, July 2nd. Can we back up so the parade is on Monday? That's what I was told. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Monday evening parade. Um, and then we have um, July 3rd is the fireworks. So... Uh, the parade is supposed to culminate in the carnival grounds, and the flag will be raised. So. All right, so let me, re let me start again. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to reschedule the July Town Council meeting from Monday, July 1st to Tuesday, July 2nd. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of rescheduling the Town Council meeting from July 1st 
to Tuesday, July 2nd. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. All right, next up on new business, the discussion of Streets and Roads Commission's recommendation that remaining lane of Prospect Road be repaved now to achieve a fully repaved Prospect Road in the affected area of the water main replacement project. I will relinquish to Mayor Hushauer and our town engineer, Barney Quinn. Okay, all right, thanks so much. As uh, Council Member DeMotor said, this came up at the Streets and Roads meeting. The way that the uh, project was originally awarded was that uh, the water main, the water line would be replaced, you know, all the way from b behind Liquidity Ale Works down to the American Legion. Those lines were over 100 years old. Uh, they were smaller in size than what we needed, so we up, up from six inches, I believe, to eight inches. Correct. Okay, so that we could supply water to all three of our different water towers at different times. As the, uh, as the needs occurred. Uh, the way that it's being funded through ARPA and the way that we worded it with ARPA was that the lane that got disturbed would be the lane that would be repaired at the end and, and fully repaved. Um, anybody who's driven down Prospect Road knows that replacing that water lane, uh, water line has been uh, quite, a, quite a project. So, uh, I'll go ahead and cut to the chase here. The suggestion was made that we, while we're doing that, we might as well repave the entire width of the road from behind Liquidity Yale Works all the way down to the American Legion, that area that, that was worked on. The problem is that to do it, we're going to have to pull out of the, the town reserves to increase the paving budget to be able to do that. But we can do a little shell game here with the current budget and fund it without a budget amendment to take care of it this year, but then next year to cover the communities that would be being repaved, which is Tall Oaks and some portions of Nottingham, we would have to increase that budget. And the cost that Barney came up with was around $120,000 to pave the entire road. And the last time the road was paved was about 17 years ago, or 18. Yeah. And the normal repaving cycle is somewhere between 20 and 25 years, so we would be coming up on that anyway. We did, um, my staff and I did put in the budget, so it's in the budget to increase next year's repaving allowance by 120,000. So it is in there. Uh, if the council is agreeable to that, that's fine. It'll come up in the budget workshop and just realize what we're doing and why we're doing it. So. So when we get to that budget line, don't say, what the heck is this? Okay, so that's the explanation. If everybody's good with it, I don't think we need a motion or anything. We just move forward. We're gonna cover it at the budget workshop and the budget. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we, so we're good without making any formal motion, Tom? Or? Yeah, there's, there's full yeah. concurrence. Okay. Yeah, we could, we could reallocate this year's budget to cover prospect growth from, from behind liquidity all the way through the, okay. the work section. So if you're good with it, we're we're off and rolling, but if anybody's got a problem with that, you can- Can I just make now. one comment? Because I know it's gonna happen. So you're reallocating. So when the neighborhoods, Nottingham and Tall Oaks, don't get the paving on the cycle that they're supposed to get it, I just want everybody to remember this meeting, that it's gonna be reallocated in the budget to do prospect instead of other places that are due for repaving. Because you know it's going to happen. People are going to be screaming and yelling that their street needs to be repaved. And if we're playing a game of shells with the budget and the money, you know, right. just remember that. And I would call it, I think you're making a motion to say we're, it's a delay. It would be a delay to Nottingham and, and Tall Oaks. Yeah. Okay. Because next year, I believe, it's just being reallocated, moved, moved around. Like, so Nottingham and Tall Oaks will be paved next year instead of this, this year. That's cool. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think there's really any delay. We're, we're, we're moving money around. I don't think it's going to impact the schedule. And, tall, and remind me from previous discussions, Tall Oaks, there was some, not concerns, but they needed to come up with some of the money for that to begin with, and, I'm, okay. and they did. So they're, so they're good to go for that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, okay. And, and if you don't mind, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, we're planning on doing Village Tall Oaks and Nottingham, uh, the first section of Nottingham, mm -hmm. um, June and July. That won't change. Yeah. Okay. It, it's just we won't have 120. We'll have 120 less in, in this year, but we're doing it all together as one project. Um, so by adding the 120, it, it won't change. We'll still have the exact same yeah. amount of money. Assuming the budget gets approved yeah. um, for, for the and project. The fiscal year starts at July 1st, correct? Yes. So, as Barney was indicating, there is no real, per se, hold up or delay. It was going to happen in the summer any, anyway. It's just a money a money reallocation. I think Tom might have yeah, had. The, the only reason you may want to do a motion, though, is because it's, you don't need it for the budget side, but, but there's a procurement part of this as well, right? You're issuing a change order to a contractor to add, what, $120,000 to the contract for the additional paving. So under our purchasing and procurement chapter, you probably best have that approved by the do by you, the council by means of motion. I'm not, if, if we want to do that, that's fine. If but you but that. would that happen in the process of approving the budget anyway? Well, I mean, when, when are we going to have them do the work? Well, the work would be done, it would be paid for, you know, I, I guess I'd divert to mm -hmm. Katie and Barney. When, when would checks be going out? So uh, the work would be looked at for this month because they're getting ready to save. Instead of just doing one lane, we'd be looking at doing mm -hmm. both lanes. So, so in effect, you're purchasing Asphalt. additional services and material. Yeah. From, so we can. Uh, I'm. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I guess doing it through a motion. I'll is just. Safer. Yeah. I'll say at a minimum we were going to do a roll call anyway, just so okay. that everyone's on record doing <laughs> to it. Cover up. Yeah. Yes. Um, but we we can do a motion. Is 120,000 uh, one an exact number? And two, do you think that this number is cheaper based on the fact that they're already going to have their equipment out there? If we were to repave this in four years, not that I want to. But if we were, would that price probably be a little bit higher than that 120000 to do one lien? Yeah, very, very okay. possible, yeah. Okay. I mean, your other alternative is just to add it to the paving, which would be a separate contractor that we're going to do in June and July. But I have no desire to disrupt the lives of anyone living on Prospect <laughs> Road again for the next 50 years. So I, uh, I will make a motion. And, and again, 120000 is... Uh, substantial to cover no no questions asked. Good number yes okay i will make a motion to approve a um procurement procure yeah a procurement to the contract to extend the paving over to all of prospect road and not just one lane in the amount of 120,000 using existing budget correct mm -hmm. i will second that motion all right any further discussion I'm fine. all right hearing none all in favor of approving 120,000 to be allocated towards repaving all of Prospect Road. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, Barney. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Next up for discussion is the possible continuance of the joint workshop with the Planning Commission for the Mount Airy Crossing Beck property. Before we go forward, uh, one quick question for Tom. Does this need to be a motion? Um, what, in your opinion, is the correct process to decide this? I mean, probably a motion approval if you're going to, whatever your action is going to be. All right, so I'll give a brief update as to what it is we're getting ready to talk about. Um, obviously, we had our joint workshop. Uh, with the council and the planning commission at the end of that workshop we did not have all of the answers from Pleasant's development they were on a requested timeline to get us back the answers they did uh, once we had time to review them we wanted to know if that was sufficient enough for us to either extend the workshop of a continuance or if everyone feels comfortable we can then move forward to voting on the pre-concept plan my thought was I was going to ask the Planning Commission for a recommendation. That is outside of code. That was not necessary. But I did not want the council to move forward without knowing that everyone on the Planning Commission was comfortable moving forward. Um, at least I wanted you to have that information. It's up to us what we do. 
but with that information, it could have helped, uh, you know, our decision. Uh, the Planning Commission decided not to say one way or the other. So uh, with that being said, we can now open up for a discussion um, on the thoughts of either a continuance or not continuance. And just to be clear, if we do not continue with the workshop, there is no public hearing. This does not go back to the Planning Commission for a favorable or unfavorable. This will be on the agenda next month to vote for or deny the pre-concept plan that has been given to us mm -hmm. at the workshop. Okay, just so everyone's clear about what we're talking about here. Uh, with that being said, uh, Councilmember Um Yes, so, so I believe, I mean, you, you all have heard me over the last couple of years. I'm very um, process focused, following the process. Uh, we had a process, we had a workshop. Um, that was my opportunity as a council member to give my questions and views on the proposed development. And uh, that was done. I saw the responses back from the developer. I believe I have the information I need to proceed to a vote. I attended the planning commission meeting. I listened to the conversation. The planning commission opted to not make a motion to proceed with a workshop. To me, the fact that they did not make that motion spoke loudly. That's just as much as a message as, as a motion. So I, I'm at a place as a council member where I've listened to the citizens, I've listened to the developer, I've followed the process, and I'm ready to go and take a vote on the pre-concept plan. And I believe the developer sent us a follow-up uh, memorandum saying they requested that this get put on the agenda and that their plan get approved. So I'm ready to go to a vote in May. All right, thank you. Council Member Munder. I would like to uh, talk about maybe offering a continuance at least until the May meeting or a hold it a workshop or continuation of the workshop in May or June due to the fact that during the planning commission uh, one of their members did bring up a point of if there was feasible or possible to spread out the senior housing a little bit more equitably, if I could pronounce that right, throughout the whole development and right after that I saw an article regarding how my generation is buying their second homes or forever homes now. Some people don't want to live in all, I want to say, portions of neighborhoods made up of particularly one age, age group. They like diversity and ages in their communities and things of that nature. And I believe the developer indicated they would be willing to talk about spreading it out a little bit more throughout the community at a workshop. Maybe that's what I might have heard. I'm not sure, but I just would like to see if that's feasible um, from, a, I guess, the person that would be selling or developing it. Also, um, they did it at our request from the workshop. They added some uh, extra field space spaces and things in, in there more as a what if or what's possible that could go in certain locations. And no matter what happens at the May vote, I would like the council to decide what goes where related to fields in that and and they are not leave it up to up to the planning commission because then if it's related to parking and everything else related to field spaces in the pre-concept plan and third i believe in the letter that councilman demoter indicated that the um 30-day well test is close to beginning or has begun currently and throughout this whole discussion i've always said i would like to see the uh, true amount of water that's being provided by the 30-day well test, not the presumption of that they have enough. If the well test has started already, I would say just I would like to see that well test before I take a final vote on it because that really determines if they have enough water. If they don't, then they would probably have to go back to the, draw, the drawing board to do it. So that's why I would like to see the continuance going, going on. There's enough reasons for me to um, 
just some more of a clarification type continuance than looking at redesigning the whole plan on this. So I can have the best information to make a fi final vote on it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mayor Usher, do you have anything? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that um, I think that the developer made significant changes, uh, you know, since that that last workshop, and uh, certainly since uh, as we've gone through the process and reducing it, you know, the number down to you know 350 homes is is quite a leap in removing the apartments. Uh, I think there were changes that I would personally, even though I don't have a vote on it, would like to to um, to talk to the developer about one more time uh, with the new plan. Uh, and I do feel like um, like we're we're moving in the right direction, and we're almost there. I think one more workshop, and I would be able to either strongly support or strongly not support uh, the plan. So I'm, I'm almost there. I just need, uh, need one more chance. Uh, I hate the metaphor, but one more bite at the apple. And, uh, and I think we would be there. Uh, I think that we're also to the point where, um, you know, where if the council makes a vote on it, I, I would be able to go to the residents and explain any decision or any, uh, you know, a, a, an opinion on my part, uh, I would be able to go to the citizens and talk to them and, and reason through where we're at in this process and, and uh, you know, and, and why we either need to go forward or, or reject. Uh, obviously, I'll support what the council comes up with, but I, I think another workshop would be, you know, or a continuation of the workshop would be a really good idea. I said we got good people on the planning commission. We got good people on the council. I think you know one more round of questions, and uh, I think we'll be there. So thanks. Anyone else have anything to say? I just want to piggyback one quick comment, if I could, on what the mayor said. So if everybody looks at what has happened from day one to now, the mayor made a good point. In okay, we listen to the public. They've listened to the public. You didn't want apartments. We didn't want apartments. They took them away. We didn't want high density. They've taken it. We, we didn't want to affect the schools. They added senior housing. That's not going to affect the schools. So I think if you look at all the facts, like the mayor said, just from this last change, they are working with us. But let's be honest. This isn't just going to stay a nature preserve unless someone's got the money to buy it from the Beck family and leave it as a farm. So I think we've all worked together really hard to try to come up with something that obviously we can all agree on, we're never going to all agree, but trying to get the various things that we each want. So I just wanted to piggyback on what the mayor said, that it's like tweaking, like a few more things I think we need. So I just have to agree with what he said. Any further discussion? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Hearing none, I'll make a motion for to continue. For a That's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. All right. I wasn't sure if we needed to do a motion. <laughs> no, okay. We're absolutely going to do okay. a motion. Okay. All I'm, right. I'm, <laughs> instead of me just kind of All right. pulling my own motion, I'd like to open it up to you guys first. Okay. And, I make a motion for the uh, continuation of the previous workshop with Pleasant's development regarding the most recent iteration of the concept of the pre-concept plan. That was submitted to the town March fourth or whatever. The most the most recent one. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of a continuance of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, right now we have a three to two. Um, with that being said, Tom, do we need to have a motion to close or a motion to close the, as the a, workshop the the you know the continuation of the workshop I, I i think you voted not to have a workshop okay good that closes okay. okay all right so we're good so with that being said um the next step for the beck property and pleasant's development it will be on the agenda for next month 
to vote favorably or unfavorably for the current pre-concept plan as it sits. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we'll now move on to commission appointments and reappointments with Mayor Hushauer. Nobody uh, this month? Thank you. Hey, that was easy. All right. That's the quickest thing we've had all night. <laughs> all right, on to our ordinances and resolutions portion of the agenda. Ordinance 2024-3. This is a budget amendment to add $49,000 to the water and sewer capital budget for a new pump for sewer station number three. This is for adoption. Do we have a motion? I make the motion to for the council approval of ordinance 2020 2024-3 regarding the new sewer pump for for water station for whatever wherever it needs needs to go. Water station number th sewer station number three. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I will I will second. Do we have any discussion? Uh, yes, I have a I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, for the town engineer. Tonight is your night party. <laughs> um, so I'm reading the uh, whereas statements, and the first whereas statement gets to the fact that originally um, we had budgeted for new electrical trenching at Water Station 1, and then it says the project's not moved forward, had no expenses. So what we're almost saying we thought we really needed that, but we don't think we really need that now. And instead, we have this other need. Um, am I kind of oversimplifying that? Because that's, that's the way it sounds. And my, my follow-up question will be, um, do, does the town have a prioritized maintenance plan for water and sewer facilities where you, you know the expected lifespan for distant different key pieces of equipment and you're going through and and you're just like on a car, you do maintenance, you replace certain parts at certain intervals. Um, do we have such a plan that we're following? Because it seems like we've been getting several of these where, oh, we have an un unexpected equipment need. We have an unexpected breakdown in this part, that part. So those are my two questions. I'll let Katie answer the first one. Okay. <laughs> So this is actually Brian's amendment, not Barney's. Brian, and the 200000 for electrical is also Brian's. I, when he told me he needed this amendment, I asked him, okay, is there anything in the budget that is not going to be completed that we're going to have to pull out anyway? Mm -hmm. And he said this 200000 for the electrical trenching, they wanted to get it done this year, but they haven't had time. They've been working on break, like they had a big sewer main break. They get called out with the prospect stuff. Right. They just haven't had the time and the 200,000 is a project. We're not hiring a company to do it. Brian and his crew are doing it. And unfortunately this year they've just been busy with other things and they haven't been able to do it. So he said that we could take that out mm -hmm. to put it towards the pump that he needed. Okay. That answer your question. Thank you. you answer your second part. Yes. Do we have a plan? So I do have plans for capital projects. Again, this was more of a maintenance project. They were something they were going to do on their own, um, repair, replacing a pump, um, running new wiring. If it's overhauling a station or things like that, that's where I would get involved in. Um, so this is a fairly sizable project for for uh, public works to where sometimes we would contract something like that out, but um, that's just not where it was for this project. Okay, but for, again, for water and sewer plant in general, do, do you have a master plan about you know, when, when certain pieces of equipment are going to need to be replaced and how, how you optimize the system? Because, I mean, are, are these normal kinds of, of pump replacements that come up out of the blue? It's just part of operating, or are we just not planning well enough to replace things before they are gonna break. Sure. So again, we have a, a, a program where we're replacing things at a larger, at a higher, higher, um, uh, you know, like a broader view. Okay. You know, more of a station, things like that. When it comes to pumps, pumps are usually replaced because there's generally an N plus one. Um, you know, there's redundancy uh, in pumps on sewer stations or um, where we have wells, we have 11 wells. If one goes down, the others can make up 
until we can get that pump. Mm -hmm. And usually they can get pumps in a fairly, you know, reasonable amount of time. Okay, thank you. So um, that's, pumps are usually left to, you know, run to failure. Basically. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we have a motion to approve the budget amendment to add $49,000 to the water sewer capital budget for a new pump for sewer station number three. It has been seconded. All those in favor of approving the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you, Barney and Katie. All right, next up, we have ordinance 2024-4 2020, to adopt tax rates for fiscal year 2425. This is for introduction and scheduling a public hearing. Uh, I will make a motion to adopt the tax rates for fiscal year 2024 and introduce. Oh, I'm sorry, introduce. to introduce. Yeah. <laughs> to introduce. Wait a minute, <laughs> to Council President. I ahead of myself there. I was going to make y'all go real late easy night. real quick. I know it's late <laughs> night, but come on. Right. No, we have to, uh, I'll make a motion to introduce um, tax rates for fiscal year 2024 and 25. Do we have a second? Second. All right, so we need to schedule a public hearing. Um, First tax season for me is is a public hearing like we normally do prior to our meeting sufficient yeah. for this? Around 15 minutes or so? I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll schedule a public hearing uh, during our next meeting on Tuesday, July 2nd uh, at 7. No, uh, May. May. May 2nd. <laughs> come on, July. Come on, July. <laughs> Fiscal year Somebody starts July 1st, okay? <laughs> All right. We're going to schedule a public hearing for our next meeting, May 6th at 7 p.m. Okay. All right, and that'll go for 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so stuck on the July <laughs> meeting being moved. All right. Seven. Yes, seven. seven. Okay. <laughs> for May 6th, 7 p.m. Uh, the next ordinance 2024-5 to adopt the budget for fiscal year 2024-25 for introduction and scheduled public hearing. Do we have a motion? Second. Do we have a motion? Hold on. Oh, I make the motion for ordinance 2024-5 to be introduced, which is the budget for fiscal year 2024-2025. Do we have a second? All second. All right, and then we will schedule a public hearing for this as well. That'll be on May 6th, uh, and this one will begin at 7.15, concluding uh, the first public hearing that we will have. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. All right, next up is Ordinance 2024-6, a budget amendment to add $12,000 for the train station pharmacy heat pump replacement. This is for emergency adoption. Uh, do we have a motion? I make the motion for the town council to adopt as an emergency ordinance number 2024-6 related to the replacement for the heat pump for the Mount Airy Pharmacy and Historical Society of Mount Airy Museum located in the train station. All right, I will second that. Do we have any discussion? Uh, yes, some quick questions. Yes, so sir. So this is the heat pump that services the entire building, is that correct? No, so it, it services the pharmacy and the lobby area. Okay, because this says train station pharmacy, that's why I was asking. Yeah, it's, it should, should be train station lobby and, and pharmacy. Okay, so this is the lobby and the pharmacy. Um, so we, we lease that space out to the pharmacy, correct? Mm -hmm. And so as part of the revenues that we get um, from leasing that out, is does does that revenue help to cover this expense? Not really. The revenue that we receive kind of just keeps up the like the maintaining of it for, throughout the year. So we get in about I don't know the number off the top of my head, but basically, like what we take in is what we budget to maintain the building. Um, okay, so the that's, so the heat pump maintenance isn't factored into that general well, maintenance the, yeah like the annual servicing of it but not not replacement not replacement because that's a capital item can i add something i i don't think the lobby is part of their lease area right. okay so, so a portion of that 
is uh, there so there's a there's a second heat pump for the museum proper. There's a heat pump for the museum, and there's a, a third heat pump for the back area, the work area of the museum. Okay, thank you. All right, any further questions? Councilmember Mulder. No, just again, Barty, thank you for answering uh, pretty much the same questions prior to the meeting to uh, speed it along a little bit, so thank you. And as a landlord, we do have a responsibility to take care of our tenants. And I do believe the pharmacy has been a very good tenant. And unfortunately, the people did go in. I don't want the medicine to be spoiled. So I believe we do need to replace the, uh, heat, the heat pump. Thank you. And we have had multiple issues with this specific heat pump, paying contractors come out and just kind of piecing it together and stuff like that. And, and now it's to the point to where it's actually probably going to be cheaper over the course of the next couple years just to replace it. It makes sense. Um, five year, five or six years ago when the, um, we renovated the, the place, um, we only added the museum unit. Um, the other two units already existed. So they were already, you know, a few years old, but we didn't feel it was time to replace at that time. So okay. it's, I think that unit is more than 10 years old now. So um, when you factor that, plus the several services that we had that didn't all get everything corrected. Yeah. Um, and it does have a leak, did have a leak on it. Um, right. So there were things that, you know, we'd be chasing that um, uh, it made sense to replace it. Absolutely, okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, there's a motion right now to approve the budget amendment to add $12,000 for the train station pharmacy heat pump. Again, this is for emergency adoption. All those in favor of approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Let's get them the, the right equipment they need. All right, next up is ordinance 2024-7. This is a budget amendment to add $20,000 for sewer line inspection on Back Acre Circle. This is for introduction. Do we have a motion to introduce? I make the motion to introduce 2024-7 regarding adding 27, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, $20,000 to the ward and sewer operating budget regarding sewer maintenance line item uh, regarding the back, eight, the final section of back acre circle, circle, including section four, lots eight through 19 and 35. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we'll see this next month. All right, next up is resolution 2024-2 for the purpose of allocating the town's available water and sewer capacity yield from 2024 through 2025. This is for adoption. Do we have a motion? I make the motion to, for the town council to approve resolution 2024-2 which is regarding the allocation of the town's available water and sewer capacity yield among the allocation cat categories. All right, do we have a second? I will second. All right, any discussion? Yes, <clears throat> yes, discussion. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, so some questions, uh, I guess this would be to the town engineer on exhibit one. So I'm looking at your spreadsheet and if you go down and look at, let's see, look at row 40 for shiny shell, mm -hmm. and you come across, and there's the negative 6310 under the redevelopment and revitalization. So to make up for that, it looks like down on line 44, you're taking 1250 from column six, column seven, column eight, I mean column nine, and column 12 to bring in 5250, which is the number you have in column 10, correct? Correct. Okay, so then you go from 5250, then you go down to the very bottom, row 47, and there's 60, 55. How did you get from 5250 to 6055? So if you go to the very top, the, the very top uh, 
call it a, a beige line going across. Gotcha, 4,000. Starts with 4,000. Uh -huh. And then you subtract 433, then subtract 1950, gotcha. add 750, subtract 102, add 5,000. So that's what's left. That's what's left. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. It was going to, it was going to, without this change, it's going to leave a small amount. There uh -huh. was, there was a little bit in there, but we felt redevelopment and revitalization is, um, where we generally spent, see more of our water getting used. So we thought we'd kind of balance that with the commercial and the industrials. Okay, next question. So up in the Bays area, row one, total water withdrawn or deposited, 81,000. So is that, is that the starting, is that the starting number? Yeah. Back like in, so in other words, in, as of 2016, we had 81,000. Is that what that means? Yes. Okay, so then you come down and you get to 2018, you get to 2020, you get to 2022, you get to 2024. The total remaining at the end of that column is 38,798. So that's what we got now to allocate. Yeah, that was on the, um, the available water capacity yield. Okay. That was that same number, that's where that number comes okay. from. Okay, so, so now we're down to 38,798, and over in your comments column, you're going to be anticipating taking out 5,000 in Category 6, another 2250 Category 6, and then you say quantity TBD Category 9 industrial for Parkland LLC, Pankland LLC. So you got 38.7, and you take out 5,000 from that. It's going to take you down to 31,548, not including this other estimate. So now you're down to 31,548. Is that relatively, is that a lot, a medium amount, a little bit? Is this the lowest amount of remaining capacity we've had over the last 10 years? I mean, give me a context. So um, when you look at all, so everything that we have in pipeline, is already taken out. Mm -hmm. It's not part of this. Um, so finishing out back acre circle, um, any other developments, um, green tree is already taken out of our overall capacity of nine, 927,000. Um, and um, we have actually, when you look at that with five developments going on 20 years ago, um, we were actually in the negative. Not that we had built all those houses yet, so we weren't truly in the negative, but when you when you uh -huh. look at the forecast, we were in the negative. That was why we entered into a consent order in 2005, um, and then, um, then re-entered into another agreement a year later. Um, but we got into the positive, bringing on well 11, uh, actually more of a break even. And then when we started um, going year to year, we were actually finding that we're even though we're bringing more houses in, we were actually using less water. And um, that was what we say was attributed to um, one, r raising rates. So we said that that might come back to us, but it was more from um, water saving devices, more uh, washing machines, dishwashers that were saving water. And so we got to the point in 2014, between 2014 and 2016, where we reevaluated and we said, you know, we really look like it's conservative to say we have 81,000 available. Now we, we're doing our, our calcs, we've been doing it every month. Mm -hmm. um, we still have those calcs going. Um, and we want to make sure that that using this 81,000 allowance doesn't put us in jeopardy the other way. If you, we go back to those calcs, at some point we'll probably go back to those calcs. But uh, for now, um, that 81,000 has been holding out fine as far as, um, and, and pretty close to what we have available. Okay. For our calcs. And then isn't there, a, again, I, I'm not remembering exactly here, but isn't there like a 12% a reserve or something? Where, where, where does that? that? That's already subtracted out. That's, that's already out. Calcs. Okay, so that's what I thought. Take 12 percent right okay. off of that. We're down to 800 some. And then, and then we're taking out what we have already in the pipeline, and then, um, um, then what we 
anything that um, we have in the potential pipeline of what's coming up okay. is, um, is, you know, at planning stage. And then this is what you have as a remainder. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we have a motion and a second to approve The allocating of town's available water and sewer capacity yield from 2024 through 2025. All in favor of adopting this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. All right, next up, we have unfinished business on our agenda. This is the discussion regarding the flat iron concepts. Um, I will lead in just to remind everybody that this is also something that was decided before this current council uh, came to be before the election. There was a resolution that passed to save the Flatiron building uh, from being destroyed. In order to do that, uh, the town hired a consulting firm uh, who then presented us with three options uh, that we can choose to move forward on how to save that. What we are basically being tasked to do tonight is to decide which way we want to move forward, whether it be option one, two, or three. Uh, we are not to dig down into the weeds of any of these options right now regarding landscaping, regarding any of those sorts of things. It's moving the building, and then it's the other two options that, you know, that we see fit. We did get a letter from the um, Flatiron Task Force with their thoughts on what they would like to see moving forward. Um, we are also not here to discuss how we're gonna pay to move forward with this. Right now it is strictly just A, B, or C. So with that preempt, I will open up the floor for discussion. Hey, Council President, can I start a little bit here? Absolutely. I might join, be back and forth to ask for a couple bites of apple, as the mayor always say. Yep. Uh, all three options have advantages and dis disadvantages. There's no denying that. Um, but the one question, and they all take parking spaces away from businesses on Main Street one way or the other. It's either all of them do take away the four spots between the Flatiron and Conchetta's. The other two takes away parking spaces from the buildings on the west side of Main, Main Street and adds some back to the east side. My primary question is, has anyone talked, or do we not talk, but do we know how important those parking spaces on the west side of Main Street in front of um, Old, Old Town and S&K Printing are to those businesses on like on a Saturday and a sun, sun, Sunday, particularly Old Town? I know there's only like eight or, eight or nine spots, but on a Sunday, if you have an older relative or something there, they hop out on the passenger side and walk into the restaurant or something. So I'm just wondering, do we know, would it be detrimental to their businesses if those spots vanish altogether? Is that do we know, I mean, I'm just open the floor to anybody, I guess. I know the advantages of taking them away for the plans and Main Street safety and things of that nature, but I'm just wondering out loud, because you know, throughout the years it's, parking on Main Street, parking on Main Street, hurts and negatively impacts the businesses, so. Let me answer in, in yeah. two different ways. Number one, of course the business that has the parking spots in front of it, think those parking spots are critical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they would not want to give them up, and I wouldn't believe if I was running a business there, I would want parking in, in front of my uh, establishment as well. But I, I, I'm gonna, give you some ease in, in saying that whatever plan y'all are agreeable and what I'm, what I'm really looking forward uh, for this evening or, or in the upcoming weeks is, is a direction. You just have to give me a direction. And then the staff and I can, can work in that direction, be it option one, two, or three. But if you're gonna take parking away, then you should, you should also emphasize the need to, to find additional parking, to come up with a creative solution. And there are solutions out there. 
we would just have to incorporate it into whatever the plan is. And I, you know, I've, I've been, I, I've talked about pulling the rabbit out of the hat, and this is a rabbit out of the hat deal. So, uh, uh, so if if parking is is that important, then we need to come up with a solution as as part of the plan. Yeah. No, I wasn't picking one one way or the other, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. I just know we're going to hear it from a couple couple businesses there. Option three seems to be potentially limiting. Um, I want to say historical trust, not just uh, obtaining of grants for the amount of, for the flat iron task force, potentially due to moving that. So it's really, which I don't want to, in the ones they tie their hands on obtaining grants and stuff. If we move it, and uh, potentially limiting the ability for them to obtain money, that's a disadvantage for option three. So the choices are really between option two and option one in my view, and that's the hardest decision, is which, which one of those two do you look at it? Because both of them have advantages and dis disadvantages of it. So out of looking at them all right now, I mean, I don't know, really. I mean, I would say I would probably lean towards option one a little bit solely due to the fact that it provides some shade along main main street um because one day i was down there there was a hot summer day people were in like 11 o'clock at old old town if we're going to limit the parking in some of these options we might as well provide people waiting for old town to open up for uh, service to have shade to step underneath the building and look the overall landscape and designs in the promenade areas are pretty much the same designs as in one and one and two. So there's no advantage or disadvantage in my view on that. Same thing with the use. We lose a little bit of space on the ground floor, but that could be used for, I mean, the basement floor where the walkway is, and that could be used for displays or art or historical displays or something else of that nature. So right now I would be leaning towards option, option one, council president and mayor. Council President, I have a, yes, if I may, I have a couple of questions about process here. So it sounds like your intent is to have us select a concept this evening. Because if that's if that's the intent, I have to say there are there there are a lot of there are a lot of things I've been very attentive to this process. Um, I attended both of the task force meetings in full where they discussed these options. I also attended most of their task force meetings over the last several months. I have a lot of things I'd like to bring out, and I'm concerned we're not going to have enough time here to, to really get into a good conversation. I mean, if we're not allowed to have time this evening to talk through some of this, because I do have a lot of comments, then maybe we need a, a workshop or something like that where we can go through these. And if not, I would just ask you know, I'm not looking for 10 minutes of time, but I, you know, I, I have, I have things I've observed. I've done my own analysis, and I would like the time to, to get those out. So that's fine. Again, this is something that a, that a the previous council decided that we are going to move forward with preserving the flat iron right. building. We are at the process of deciding which way we are going to preserve it, whether we move it, whether we put a gallery in there, or whether we, whether we do the promenade. Um, I understand the need for questions, and, and you know that's fine. You can have the time for those questions if it's regarding plan one, two, or three. And that's it. Not, not the landscaping, not you know, any of that stuff, but, but plan one, two, or three, the same way that Carl just went through okay. you know, his thoughts. Um, but yes, the, the plan for this evening is to, like the mayor said, give him and the town staff a direction to move forward in um, just regarding whether we move the building, put a walkway in, or, or do the project. Okay, and, and my follow-up is th this is an important decision. We're, we're talking about $4 million plus, and the option we choose is going to forever have an impact on the town. So, and... I think I would like to bring up some, some cost concerns as well, and I think this is the right time to do that. So so I would, I would disagree with that. Um, I think the right time to do that would be in the budget workshop. 
um, when we are allocating funds to the Flatiron building, whichever way we choose to say. The fact is, regardless of which one we choose, which is what we're tasked to do in this portion of the process, they are all relatively the same amount, um, which was given from Brennan and Co. at the presentation. Uh -huh. Within a couple hundred you know, thousand dollars. Correct. Which, again, is, is very substantial, but we're not going to write that check right now. So what we're saying is, and, and again, what we're looking for is option one, two, or three. Um, and again, I think we both have a lot of budget questions when it comes to the flat iron. Um, but I would ask that we have those questions and, and get those answers when going over the fiscal budget uh, at our workshop. Okay. All right. So I do have some, some comments, observations. Shall I begin? <laughs> Give me a two-minute warning, all right? You got it. <laughs> all right. So. Two-minute warning. <laughs> enough. Enough. <laughs> this is this is serious business. This is this is a four point five million dollar project, and I have great grave concerns about it. So I'll get to the concepts. Okay. So and I'm going to get to them through looking at the flat iron memo that we got. I find that that memo is filled with many opinions upon which the recommendations are based. These opinions were really not vetted or validated or verified in any way. They're just opinions that, that shaped the task force's recommendation back to us. And I, I kind of find it disheartening that, that a recommendation is based on unchecked or unverified partial information. I want to make one key point. There's language in the memo that says, quote, we have consulted with various organizations to assure the town that the building is structurally sound, quote. I believe this is factually incorrect. Your multiple engineering assessments and the town's own communications to the public say and prove otherwise. So I don't believe that's factually correct. Moving on. So I did attend both of the task force meetings because I respect the people involved. I, I want to hear their opinions. Um, I view their opinions no less so than anybody else but I view other people's opinions no less so than anyone else. I'm here to represent everybody in the town, so I need to listen to all the lenses of comments. It was interesting, on the first meeting, the options one and three got the most traction. Option two did not get very good traction for a number of reasons, and these concerns were brought up they were never really picked up at the second meeting where they really focused on option two. But the issues with option two, as I heard and I believe, option two involves re removing Main Street, totally shifting the roadway in kind of an unnatural way. You're going to bump out the sidewalk by the Flatiron Building somewhere around four feet to make that a code promenade sidewalk, you're shifting the lanes, kind of jiggering them off to the left, you're taking away all the parking spaces on the west side, now you have moved those lanes over to the west side, and you've basically moved your pedestrian safety issue from the flat iron side over to the west side, and it was brought up if you look at the sidewalk in front of SK Printing, I went out and measured it. It's like four feet. That, that is not to code. Now you're going to shift the roadways all the way over because you're taking out the parking space. This is how you're making the room for that four feet over by the Flatiron Building. That road is now going to abut right up along the sidewalk of SK Printing. So I, I, you have not addressed the safety issue. You've just transferred it to the other side. And I would add, until we approach MDOT and lay out a plan and say, we want to reroute this roadway, here's what we want to do, I, I'm going to be, I'll be pleasantly surprised if they approve that re rerouting because you're, you're, you're shifting the roadway to a, like an unnatural 
travel path. If you come down south going north, you come down Calvary, you come down towards the Flight Iron Building, that road is suddenly going to jig over and up in that area. It, it's nonsensical to me. If MDOT would approve that, then, then you have progress. If they don't, option two is dead in the water. It's dead in the water, okay? Um, I believe that there, you know, it's unfortunate a number of things are said during the course of those meetings that it's misinformation, misunderstood. They talked about option three, relocation, and they're in the audience, they thought that they were losing the ground floor of the building. They're not. Option three involves building a totally new foundation, a totally new first floor, then moving the next two floors on top. So that was a misunderstanding within the, within the task force. Um, there were concerns about um, disruption to Main Street. Well, all three options, and a task force member noted this, is going to involve significant um, disruption to Main Street and Park Avenue. All three options involve regrading Park Avenue and working on Main Street in some capacity. So I believe that um, I've been very clear and consistent on my position regarding the disposition of this building. Um, my comments are on the record for all to see. People can go and look at them at previous council meetings. I do not flip-flop. I stand by my policy positions. That said, if you're asking me what option I would pick, the only option that gives you everything, that checks all the boxes, is option three. It, it allows you to keep parking on the west side. It adds about seven parking spaces on the east side. It moves the building back. You get to keep a patio space. You're getting almost a new building. Option three is the only one that truly checks most, if not all, of the boxes. And if I'm going to spend $4.5 million, because I believe that's what it's going to be, this project better check all the boxes, not just some of the boxes. And I'll stop there for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else with thoughts? Council President. Yes, sir. So I kind of share the same sentiments um, as Council Member Demoter uh, with the parking, but after looking at it a little bit more and the speed limit on Main Street, I don't think it's going to be as instrumental moving the road in that manner down there. Um, I've always said that the parking spots on Mount Airy, Main Street are just, I don't even like parking there. It's, it's terrible. I mean, you could see in the crash reports how many mirror slaps and, you know, <laughs> parked cars hits were, were on that report. So I'm torn between um, two and three. I would lean towards concept two um, with the flexibility, and I was reading the funding opportunities are, are better with that particular concept. Um, for them to be able to uh, accept grants and so on and so forth. Um, so for the record, I would probably lean towards uh, number two. I have some other comments if whenever. Council Secretary Galetti, do you have anything? Yeah. Um, so I agree with Council Member Evans because if you look at, and, and I I went through the minutes of everybody's comment at the meeting. I know Council Member Demoter was there, but they, this task force has put a lot of thought into, it's not just their opinions, they put a lot of thought, a lot of work into reaching out and contacting these other places and agencies and engineers, et cetera, and um, getting all their information. So their concern with moving the building was affecting the structural integrity of the building. So I know that was one of the reasons why, well, 70% of them voted for concept two, but I know that was one of the des deciding factors for several people when they were commenting that night at the meeting because they felt like building uh, concept two, which is the promenade, gives the greatest flexibility for the future use without affecting the integrity of the building. 
So I have to agree with you on that part with building, uh, with concept two. Anyone else? I'll, can I just give my initial comments? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Council President. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's a tough decision. Uh, I, I was in agreement to to save the Flatiron Building, um, but you know, obviously, with with the budget being the foremost important thing, uh, and and the amount of tax dollars that are going to be going into it. With that being said, um, I concept one for me was was not an option only because it does remove the square footage to allow. A business or an entity to pay rent to the town to get a return on the investment um, it does remove a, a lot of square footage to you know and I, I love artwork and stuff like that but at the end of the day it doesn't pay the bills um, and if we're gonna put four million dollars into something I want to get some sort of a return even if it's a long-term return we, we want to get something back um, concept three scares me <laughs> I've never seen a building moved um, I don't necessarily know if I want to see a building moved um, you know for me concept two does check most if not all of it we we can put businesses into you know the facility and, and hopefully get some return on investment rather quick but I do agree with council member Demoter that you know if something with the road and that pedestrian safety doesn't get fixed um, it, it's gonna obviously make us have to reconsider after what we look at, but we can't expect town staff or MDOT to even come out if that's not what we as a collective group have decided to at least go forward doing. Um, you know, I, I don't want to pay town staff to do a lot all that research and then they come out and MDOT says something and, you know, we weren't even thinking about doing that concept to begin with. So. I understand the concerns, and there's there's concerns about all three. Um, but again, this is more of an idea of what we see going forward. And then once we see that idea, we can then address those concerns accordingly. And if they build up to where it's too much, then we come back and we're going to revisit these ideas again. But in order to get MDOT out here, or in order to get an idea of what exactly we are going to be facing, we need to figure out at least a way forward in one direction. And then we'll revisit once we get some answers. You know, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, with that being said, I, I would lean concept two, again, only because it does give the highest ROI uh, to the town in the future. But I think that MDOT would probably be one of the first calls uh, once the plan is drafted up to make sure that this pedestrian safety is going to be taken care of. Um, because I agree with you. I, I don't want to just shift anything. If we're going to do it, let's do it. Let's fix it. Um, but again, concept two for me does check those those boxes. Okay. Council Member Demoter. Yeah, and so <clears throat> again, with with option two, it's 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 not just the pedestrian safety. Uh, I, I'm just curious when MDOT looks at the shift that we're proposing in concept two. I mean, it's all we can do to get them to approve uh, putting in a crosswalk on Main Street. I'm I'm anxious to see what they're going to say about shifting their highway. And the way that we're proposing shifting it, um, uh, two two summary statements I want to get on the record. And I mean, again, I the task force has a lot of passion, but you understand, everyone's looking at it through a different lens. I mean, there are people on that task force; they they'd be happy just having the building sit there with no improvements. Some of them would just be happy having the building redone without any patios. Um, let me give you an example. A task force member says, our concern isn't so much traffic on Main Street, it's about preserving the building. Also parking, not as big as a concern. But see, my job as a council member is to have all those concerns. My job is to make sure whatever we pick addresses all the issues and needs for all the citizens of the town. So I want to give a summary statement. My summary statement is, Using safety as a key criteria, because if you address safety, it will put you on a good path. Looking at all the lenses of citizen input to include the town survey, where again, 75% of the people chose an option other than restoring the building. And regarding the top two issues, traffic safety on Main Street and revitalization of the downtown zone, which came out of the survey, so the top two issues. 
I do not believe that option two fully achieves solutions to these issues, including fully addressing safety or providing an economic return of investment as currently defined. If I had to pick an option, I would do option three relocation. Thank you. Absolutely. Council Secretary Glitter. So I just want to say one quick um, summary, something I thought of when you just pointed out the state of Maryland and would they, we can't get them to crosswalk. I have to wonder, Mayor, if we're going to the state and saying we're, we're doing this to a building, you've had a safety issue on Main Street all these years. We're going to actually improve the road for you at our dime. I'd imagine, I, I would just have to think devil's advocate, the state might like that that we're going to improve a safety issue they've always had that's only gotten worse. And we're saying, hey, we're, we're going to do this improvement to the road here to go with this building, and we're paying for it. I'm just wondering if the state would like that. That's all. I'll relinquish, now that all council members are done, to our mayor, Larry Hushoff. All right. All right, thanks. Uh, good comments by everybody. I absolutely get it. Um, what I would point out is that the, the building as it sits right now, has brought in a $150,000 grant, followed by a 50,000 facade grant, followed by 22 plus thousand dollars from the Historical Society, and $5,000 from the American Legion. And that's just sitting there as a vacant building. If you, I think it's something that we could chip away at. This isn't gonna be an overnight deal if you, Moved the building. Now you're <laughs> now you're taking a big chunk, and uh, it may be too big of a bite to to keep going through these these grant options. Um, I respect what the uh, task force wrote. I I could work with that. I was always a option one guy because that's the way it was presented on the first night was to do a walkthrough, and I think that does satisfy some requirements. Um, I think that uh, that the disruption that would be caused by moving the building is greater than option one or option two, where you restore it in place in some manner. Um, so that's kind of my opinion on that. But again, uh, you know, council makes a decision, and, and we'll figure out how to make it happen. All right. With that being said, I'm going to ask Tom a quick question for this. Again, it's not a ordinance or anything like that. Would this just be a, a resolution as to what the council feels, just the same way that they made a resolution to destroy, but then they also counter resolution months later to then save? Right. So it'd be the same motion. I think. Yeah, there was no resolution. I'm not sure they were resolution. Okay, so it was just a, it was just a motion for intent of the council. Okay, I wanted to clarify that. Again, I wasn't here when that happened, so I right. <laughs> just want to intend. Um, I will open the floor for a motion if we have no further discussion. No further discussion. I'll make the motion that the uh, council makes a recommendation to the town for option two, since that seems to be the overall pick by th the majority of the council members, uh, to further recommendation of option two to the town staff and the mayor to further investigate funding opportunities and things of that nature. Is that, I'm not sure how to word the motion to do it. Is that good enough, Tom? Is, okay, clear enough for option two as presented here. I will second the motion for concept two, uh, the promenade. promenade. Yeah, thank uh, you. Do we have any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we have a motion to approve the way forward for the flat iron building with concept two, the promenade. Uh, it has been seconded. There is no further discussion. All those in favor of concept two being the way forward for town staff, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right, thank you. All right. And that being said, we will now move into our closed meetings. Uh, statutory authority to close session general provisions 3-305B7 to consult with council to obtain legal advice on a legal matter. Subject is public works agreement. And 3-305B3 for land acquisition. At the conclusion of those closed meetings, this 
council meeting will then be adjourned. I will now roll call. Council Member Evans. Aye. Council Member Munder. Aye. To Secretary Galetti. Aye. Council Member Demoter. Aye. I am an aye as well. Thank you very much.